house of prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you happy? We're having a Sunday night service. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I hope you came with your expector on. Did you turn your expector on? How many guys had it on all day? I've had that thing on all day. Amen. I ex I'm expecting miracles tonight. I'm expecting the power of God to move tonight. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Psalms chapter 56, verse 3 and 4. Psalms chapter 56. I love the book of Psalms, and everybody who knows me knows that Miss Laura loves the book of Psalms because everything is a song. And I love to worship God. So, Psalms chapter 56, verse 3 says, But in the day that I'm afraid, I lay all my fears before you and trust in you with all of my heart. How many of you guys trust God with all your heart? Lay all your fears before him tonight. What harm could a man bring to me? With God on my side, I will not be afraid of what comes. But this is my favorite part right here. This is the whole point of this verse. The roaring praises of God fill my heart and I will always triumph as I trust his promises. Glory to God. The roaring praises of God fill my heart. Listen, I believe when we get to heaven, it's not gonna be quiet. I believe we're going to get in the throne room of God and there's going to be a roar of praise in the throne room of God. There's going to be a roar. It's going to be a sound like has never been heard on the earth. Amen. But listen, I believe we can have the roaring praise right here, right now. I want you to stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. And say the roaring praises of God. Fill my heart. Say it again. The roaring praises of God. Fill my heart. And I will always. Always. What does always mean? Always. I will always triumph. <laughs> as I trust his promises. Listen. God's word is true. And you can bank on this word. His promises are for you. That's for tonight. That's for right now. His promises are true. Amen. Do you believe that? Turn to your neighbor and say, His promises are true. I believe it. Now listen. The roaring praises. Praises. Did you catch that? Roaring praises of God fill my heart. How do you triumph? Roaring praise. You know what that says to me? Roaring worship fills this, this auditorium or this church tonight. The roaring praises of God are, is going to fill this house. Amen. The sound of heaven fills this house. Amen. Are you ready to worship God? Lift your hands. Say, Father, I've come to worship you. I've come to seek your face. And Father, as I minister to you, I thank you. You minister to me. So, Father, I thank you right now. We push out anything that would stop us from worshiping you. God, you have our undivided attention right now. Just tell it. Father, you have my undivided attention. I'm going to worship you. God, I expect you to move tonight in my situation. And now I'm going to worship you and praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, say amen. That means I agree, so be it. Are you ready to worship? Come on, let's let the roaring praises of God fill this house tonight. Here we go.
question. How many of you are breathing air tonight? That's you. The Bible commands you to praise the Lord. He commands you to pray. You know what that means? When you take a breath in, everybody take a breath in. God gave you that breath. Now let it out. That's the Ruach breath of God. He gave you the breath you're breathing. He gave you that breath. And so what we want to do today is we want to use that breath to thank the Lord and praise the Lord. You praise him with your sound. Praise him with your sound. Praise him with your sound. Come on, praise him. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for your presence in the house. God, I thank you for the air that I'm breathing. I thank you. I thank you for my health. I thank you for my healing. God, I'm just so thankful for your presence tonight. We welcome your spirit in this house tonight, God. We're so thankful. We're so thankful.
even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, cause you are not working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, you are the waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Break every chain to break every chain to break every chain. 
to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. You're breaking all my chains. Every chain, He's breaking every chain. Breaking all my chains. To break every chain. You're breaking all my chains, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Breaking all my chains now. tonight uh, oh man <laughs> before we begin i just i just need to give an honorable mention to pastor dave and mary jo williams who have joined us tonight <laughs> <laughs> we love Pastor Dave Williams and we love Mary Jo and they are spiritual parents of this church. Amen. <laughs> I also want to want to say thank you to uh, Dr. Denise from the Gilead Healing Center for helping make all this possible. <laughs> And uh, I, would, I would like to ask Pastor Billy Burke if he would come up and, and minister from the Holy Ghost to the people tonight. And we just want to say thank you for coming. We love you. There's no time limit. And we just want the Holy Ghost to do what the Holy Ghost does. Amen. 
Would you make Pastor Billy Burke oh, and Melanie welcome nothing tonight? Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything, is there anything too hard for me? Well. Put your trust hey. in God alone and rest upon hey. His Word. Oh, I have... oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't change the song. It, it won't work if you change the song. This side's singing one thing and you're singing another thing. It's a real easy song. Everything, oh, everything, everything, everything is possible. That's it. With God. And, and nothing is impossible when, when you, you put, put your, your trust in God. Come on, everybody. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Well, put your trust in God alone and rest upon His Word. We'll have to, we'll have to call that the House of Prayer version. That's it, and I like that version. The House of Prayer version. Put your hands up all over the place. So great to have you tonight, everybody here, and just pray tonight that as you stay open and yielded, even maybe more so than you wanted to when you came in here tonight. God helps humble people. He helps people that are desperate. People don't give a holy hoot what other people think. They're here to get a, get a hold of that hymn, to get rid of the, all the medication, the death sentence, you know, to break free from all those thoughts that have you captive, held hostage for so many years. Living in neutral. God's here to break you out of neutral tonight. He's here to break you out of neutral tonight. Come on, say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Tonight, tonight. Give me the grace, give me the grace. To, yield to, you to yield to you at a higher level. A higher level. Help, me Help me shock myself and the people that live with me <laughs> that I would go that far <laughs> to get a hold of the mighty presence. Give me that grace. I'll go all the way with it. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Oh. Oh. Now, I'd like to keep that whistle going all night. Because if the world can party, we should be able to celebrate. Is that right? Tell your neighbor here tonight, just say, stay out of my way all night. Stay out of my way. <laughs> you may be seated. You may be seated. Praise the Lord tonight. How many, it's your first time here at the house of prayer. Let me see first time here oh great great to have you anybody come in from out of state anybody here out of state out of no everybody here from michigan out of state where are you from seattle great to, that's close that's close great to have you here tonight what a wonderful wonderful time and thank you to pastor dave kokenauer and his beautiful wife over here give them a big big God bless you.
You know, it's not, it's not usual that you would see the leader of a congregation live out his faith while fighting for his faith. Usually there's people that just, and everybody can do their own thing, but the fact that he would choose to be an example to you, you know, should you incur anything in this journey, we don't know what lies ahead for any of us. We only have faith for where we came from. Faith that we're about to face, we have to grow it. That's why people that run into new things, like, oh my God, I never thought I would. That's because you have to grow faith to meet the current challenge. So your confidence tonight is where you came from. The bear and the lion, you wrestled them. But right now you could be facing Goliath. And it's a whole different animal. You know, I, I said it's a whole different animal. You know, the bear and the lion were animals. But that Goliath, he had bad breath. Come on, somebody say bad breath. He was a whole different enemy. And some things you just fight, but there's other battles that may be facing you that you're going to think, I got to go grow me some faith. I got to go get around some people that have been through some stuff. Because if you haven't been through anything, you can't help anybody. We follow somebody that holds his hands out and says, look at the holes in my hand. We follow not a muscle man. We follow a, a savior that rose from being scratched and marked. We don't leave this life without getting marked. Don't be ashamed because you've been hit with something. Be ashamed if you don't do anything about it. Okay, don't be ashamed if you just sit there and take it and think, well, I hope I get better. There's a healer that waits for you. I said, there's a healer that waits for you. And what's his name? Jesus. But how does he bring that healing? Boy, you are a smart group of people. I can tell you've been receiving. How many was here this morning? How many was with us? And wasn't that some service this morning? I'd like to collect a couple testimonies this evening from somebody from this morning or maybe at Gilead or last year. Come quickly. Just let me give me about a half a dozen. Quickly. Give me about a half a dozen. Anybody else? Quickly. Quickly. Very important that we capture a few of these. Yes, ma'am. Last year I was here and you prayed for my knees. For your what? For my knees. Your knees? My legs. Uh -huh. I wasn't able to walk real well. Uh -huh. And you prayed for me. And I ran around the building. I was, you had me running here and you said I was going to go get a hamburger. <laughs> um... I still have some pain in the legs, but I'm walking. Okay. I God will a, always leave enough left over for you to work on. I have a he's cement gonna, ball. He's never going to let somebody always be your source. He may use somebody to give you 80% or 100% or maybe sometimes all, but maybe the next time he wants you to use your faith. It's one of the reasons he lets you go through things and me go through things. So we just don't use our willpower. So we don't get lazy using faith. So you bring that name to every fight. You bring that blood to every fight. That's the difference between fighting with the faith and with your will. And so many Christians just fight with their will. I'll beat this. I'm going to get through this. I've been through so much. I'm going to get through this. That's you, you, and a double dose of you. That's dangerous. Bring Jesus to the fight. Bring his name in it. Bring his blood to it. Bring his promise, one of his promises to it. Bring a faithful event that he did for you years ago to the fight. That's, that's, that is, that's your team that you bring to something that when you run into something that you've never run into before. But you just can't say, hey, I, I, in the name of my church, in the name of my pastor. You know, now my dad was a great man. I studied under so-and-so. That don't scare the devil. But whenever you remind the devil, hey, here's the testimony that God did for me 10 years ago. Come on, somebody. Here's the... Come on. Come on, somebody. Powerful. That is so, that's pretty powerful stuff. I have a... I'm waiting for a liver transplant. You're waiting. So you're on the list for liver transplant? I'm on transplant. the list. Okay. And my, my score is at 17. 
I haven't taken their medicine for over a year, but I've been self-medicating myself mm -hmm. with things I know that I probably shouldn't have been right. doing. And um, I made up my mind when, last week when I knew that you were going to be here again. I said, that's it. That's enough. I dropped everything, stopped all of the self-medicating, everything. And I said, God's going to heal me tonight. My liver's going to be healed. I'm going to get a new knee because they won't give me a new knee until they do my liver transplant. So I'm believing God for a new knee. There's a cement ball in there right now that I want him to turn into right, a knee. Right, right. And that's what I know. But when possible. you do that, when you do that, I want you to learn from tonight. I'm not just here to pray for a few people, but when you do that, it's, it's everyday faith. Again, my new saying is you can't fight a full-time devil as a part-time Christian. So, I mean, every day you've got to hit that knee if, you, if you're serious about it. But we get so secure in ourselves, we, we forget about it. We skip three or four days. Cancer don't skip days. Alzheimer's don't skip any days. That's why they continue to put pressure on your human body. You know, so the only way you can fight that is with what? With there's another spiritual force that we have, which is the Holy Spirit. Come on, say the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. is stronger than, any other spirit. stronger than any other spirit. Come on, they are subject to Him. When he shows up, it's a fixed fight. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, come on. It's true. It's true. But, but when, when you tell me you're trusting and you're believing, I mean, in a meeting like this, I'm going to just say amen. But if we're private, if I'm alone with this woman here, I'm going to say, what's that mean? What's that mean? What's that look like when you say you're believing tell me what that means what's that how's that involved see this bit more in the middle east is horrible it's not affecting us every day it's so we're so far remote from everything that's going on over there the hostages the tunnels the rape and the killing of babies and we hear it, it's horrible but we're so distant from it and that's the way life gets and then that's the way your your trials get and your conditions and you want to be what? You want to be, you don't want to wait for them to strike and then you react by saying in the name of Jesus. You want to get up in the morning and say, welcome Holy Spirit and then put the devil in his place. Come on. Come on. Come on. I mean it. Have your morning cup of coffee, and then right next to it, have a, a little cup of the juice and say, I'm taking the blood too, by the way. I drank the coffee. Get that coffee taste out of my mouth. I'm going to take some and remind myself about my back and hit it. Come on, say, every yoke can break. Every yoke can break. Come on, say, every yoke, every yoke. of any yoke, any yoke. Is, breakable. is breakable. What breaks it? The steady pressure. Not always the sudden pressure, not always a healing meeting. But if you'll take what you're learning here or the touch that you get here, there's a healing touch and then there's healed. And a lot of people get a healing touch that never get it to being healed. You know, then they, they blame the preacher. Well, you know, when he was here, I was better, but what do you want me to do? Move into the house of prayer or what? I didn't say it for that reason. I've had more people say, I'm taking you home with me. They've all been ladies, of course, and they say, no, I can't do that. I'm happily married, number one. But number two, I just can't go to your house. And one lady in Washington handed me a check for $5,000. And she had waited for me back at the tape table. She has $5,000, you've got to come to my house. And I said, whoa. I said, ma'am, I'm not that kind of preacher. <laughs> And then I slipped. I thought, what kind of preacher is that to begin with? But she didn't mean anything by it. That wasn't even her mojo. She just needed someone in her face to tell her that she wasn't going to die. She didn't know how to handle the death sentence. She didn't know how to handle that. Some of these battles, I mean, they don't quit. The lights go out and we go home from the meeting. But they don't quit. It's not usually the pain, it's the voice that talks to you behind the pain. It's the voices. And you hear them and I hear them. And if they're not answered, if you leave those voices run rampant, 
you know, you just get caught up as, as a hostage. You know, and you, you begin to believe what you're steadily exposed to. You have to change your exposure. I'm sorry that somebody didn't tell you that Christianity is full-time. And getting a healing miracle is even more than full-time. Because like I said, God's never going to let you depend on somebody for all your stuff. He's your source. Come on, look up and say, you're my source. The preacher is a resource. But you're my only source. And I'm looking unto Jesus. Come on, give him a big shout here tonight. Come on. Come on. I think I told you that story this morning, but I, there's so many stories that I have over 45 years of being in this, and you learn. You learn how, because you really want to help people. If you're in this and you want to help people, or if you're in this just to grow a ministry or to gain a reputation, it's a whole different thing. But to genuinely help people, you've got to help people become responsible with, with their weapons, with their relationship. You know, and I've had people come in. One guy was blind and completely blind. He got his sight pretty quickly. And then he was upset with me because he, he didn't get any color. He's like, I have no color. I said, I'm, okay, you can see. He, it's the first time he has seen in most of his life. He said, but everything's black and white. I said, I'm sorry you didn't get color. He said, well, can you give me color? I said, no, I don't have any color. You know, I'm thinking, I said, if you take this black and white miracle home and you work with it. One girl came to Dan Myers, uh, uh, Myers' church in uh, Fort Myers, Dan Betcher's church. And uh, this little girl wanted to be 5'5". Five, five. She was 5'1". So she wanted to grow four inches. And I didn't know her daddy came and brought a tape measure with him. I didn't know any of that. She came up on the stage and she said, ah, I, I want to be 5'5". Five, five. I said, how tall are you? She said, 5'1". I'm expecting a miracle. And I said, honey, let's go for it. I mean, that's, you know, I don't know what's coming out of that prayer. I prepare me, but I, have no, I mean, God's beyond any human person. And so I touched her. She goes under the power. She's laying on the stage. And she said, I can feel it. I'm growing. Daddy, I'm growing. There's like maybe 2,000 people in that meeting. Five state-of-the-art cameras filming it. So I just stood back and said, okay. And she's there like, I'm, I said, you sure? And she said, I'm growing. Well, he comes running up on the stage with the tape measure. He said, stand up, baby, stand up. I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, you know. And so she stood up and he said, you're five, five, one, five, two, five, three, five, four. And it stopped at five, four. And she looked right at me. She said, I want five, five. <laughs> I said, but I don't have 5-5 five, five tonight. I, if you can find another church, another preacher that can give you one more inch, please go do it. I said, all I have is what I just did. And she said, but I want 5-5. Five, five. I said, I know you do. Do you know there's not too many places where you can go to church and pick up three inches? <laughs> she was clueless, as a lot of people are, that a lot of times God won't take everything away. You know, he'll, he'll knock the giant down. He'll let the giant get knocked down so you can cut its head off. So you get involved in your own breakthrough. The fact that you learn to use your faith and not just your will. Not just your, not just your anger. Because if you don't learn to use your faith, fear is going to get a hold of you. As it did in the pandemic. So much fear surfaced right in the church. Believe me, people were just all over the place. And that's a great lesson that we have to prepare. There's more stuff coming. We've got to get ready for the end time pestilences. Whoever thought you'd be reading about end time diseases and they'd be born in a laboratory. I mean, the devil just, I mean, he's just completely has brain damage. He's on drugs. Come on, somebody help me here tonight. So you and I have got to get ready to really respond with what we're learning here in these church services come on say in the name, in the name. by his blood, by his blood.
that wonderful anointing. The written word says, his faithfulness to me. You know, build your arsenal. Build your arsenal and, and, and use it. Use it for every little thing you're fighting now. Refuse to worry. Refuse to give in to fear. Your fight's not over. You know, she's on a, a, a liver uh, list, waiting for a liver. My God, I'd rather get on the miracle list. Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for a new miracle. A new liver. I'm not her, but if I'm her, I'm saying, God, you know, I'm on this list. They're, they're going to cut me, and, and I'm, I'm believing for this liver. But, God, I'd, I'd like you to beat that and create a new one in the meantime. We've seen new livers. We've seen breasts grow back. We've seen lungs grow back. And kidneys. And kidneys. We don't think nothing's impossible because we think some things are. Come on, say everything. Jesus said it. If you go to church. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that, did he? Huh? If you're Pentecostal. If you're really, really a good person. If you've never sworn in your life. <laughs> he said what? If you believe don't confuse what you believe with what you know you know more than you believe you know way more and that's that's the that's the deception because you know so much you think you believe it all and some of the simplest bible stories that you know you haven't put your faith around it yet that god can change anything anything so tonight this isn't limited to just your health we're going to believe for some miracles, but we'd like to see God change your thinking. You know, about your house or your car, about your retirement benefits, about your children. You know, I mean, God can do anything. That's a stretch. Come on, put your hands up. Let's get it right here from the beginning. We've got a lot of work to do tonight. Come on, say, my God, my God. is God. Is God. My, God. my God, he is God. He's Lord, He's Lord of all. And He can do anything. With time, space, and matter. And even me. He can do anything. Everything is subject to change. When it comes to the Holy Spirit. I declare tonight. I'm about to be shocked. And surprised. Of what God's going to do in me tonight. Give him a mighty thunder of praise. Come on, give him a mighty. Oh, that's, come on, a mighty. Come on, a mighty. That's exciting, ma'am. And who's the little girl? This is my granddaughter, Abigail. And she's just with you to be with you? She comes with me to church. Okay, touch this precious lady by all the power. Wow. Why does God slay people? Because in the Bible, whenever you're on your feet, it's a sign of you being in charge. Did you ever say, when I get back on my feet, I'll take care of that? Come on, ever say, when I'm back on my feet. When you're on your feet, it's, my, it's, it's you saying, this is my strength. Horizontal says, I, I can't do much. And that's why God lets you be and come in a different position. Your position matters. Because with the slaying power, he expects your inside to go with you. And where you yield, where you surrender to whatever he wants to do. And I see a lot of people that just resist Holy Spirit because they just, they want everything to stay in place. Their dignity, they don't want anyone to know. They whisper to me and say, I don't want this said over the microphone. And you try and do all of that till you're with 2,000 people. And then you let something slip and somebody gets mad. But the reason there's little love in the church is because nobody knows what you're going through. 
the more love that'll go grow into a church is when people begin to realize what each other what you're fighting that's where compassion hits when we wow she's going through that he's facing that how's he even do that how's he even get to church maybe that's what I mean I judge those children now I know why those children are oh my god because we don't know everything about everybody come on say my love's got to go deeper you know, and that's why what binds us is a common savior, a common enemy, and common suffering. Everybody in here, I would think, is going through something. Or you're about to. You just came through something, I know, but you're about to go through something else. Isn't that the way life is? Come on, say, put your hands up and say, God, let me have mercy. On everybody around me. Give me that love of God. Let me think like you and feel like you I ask you for that tonight in Jesus name that's a wonderful thing what happened who's next here what happened sir um, this uh, this morning um, we came to the service my yes. wife and I yes yeah. she's she's sick and I have according to the doctor's report I have heart issues okay and some liver issues um, the I had some severe stiffness in my shoulder and my neck uh -huh. I was really concerned about trying to drive back here tonight to, oh. to try to get you to lay hands on me yeah to heal me yeah and during the service it just lifted Amen. come on come on you see it's your pursuit it's your pursuit of his presence. David was after God's heart. He never had it, but he was after it. He was a man after. He wasn't a man that God, he was a man after. And even in his pursuit is where a lot of his reward came from. That means in, in the pursuit of this, you run into you and you run into all the things that aren't right, all the things that you need. And if you can continue and just not get taking yourself too serious but keeping that wonderful focus on him how big he is how this is all about him using you to manifest his glory to the whole place your story tonight is to be used for your family there's people where you work need to see a real miracle come on there's people where you are But I love this. I mean, he, he just, he persisted. Come on, say, my perseverance will pay off. My perseverance will pay off. Say it again. My perseverance, my perseverance will, pay off. will pay off. And it will. I mean, if you're a one-string guitar, if that's all you are, I'll go down, check it out, and see if there's anything down there. I'll go let him pray for me one time. You know, and, and then you say, well, I didn't feel nothing. I didn't get nothing. Man, you can't even get drunk on one bottle of beer. Come on, say amen. You can't gain weight with one banana split. Come on, say something. It's those 16 banana splits that'll do you in. You got to stay with it. Give this wonderful Jesus, you know, more opportunity to touch and preach and prophesy and, and just release in you. And what you're fighting now, a lot of that stuff disappears. Even though it's not terminal. A lot of stuff that isn't terminal tonight. Well, there's a lot of issues that aren't terminal. But they take away the quality of your life. He wants you to be strong all the days of your life. You may get hit, but it's time to recover. I said it's time to recover. Come on. So... So why, why do you wear the mask? Why do you wear the mask? Oh, because well, my doctor and cardiologist told me to, to be careful because uh, um, the, the heart issues, according to the doctor's report. Jesus' report says, by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They told me to, so I do. Okay, okay well, be that's fine. Because they say I'm in a high-risk category, okay? Okay. So You were in a high-risk category tonight. You could catch a miracle right here in this all the time. Uh, tell your neighbor, you're in danger of a Holy Ghost touch. Come on, tell them. 
but you got to be willing. Peter said, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, well, then you have no part of me. Peter had that wall up. But when Jesus said, then you have no part, then when those walls came down, he said, oh, no, wash my face, my hands, my head, do everything. We have these walls up. And we just never hope that we have to be in the place like they are where you really need something, life or death. Because you want to keep that wall up. Vulnerability is what releases, it's, it's a magnet for the anointing. It's a magnet. I need you. I need the invisible God. I need the God that I can't see with my eyes, but only with my faith. I need that God. I need to believe what was written of, about this God. And I, I need to break away from what people that don't even know God. I got to break away from the news anchors. They think they know everything. The, the inventors and the discoverers and the, and the A and the I. How many know A, I? And, and my cell phone thinks it knows everything. If I ask my cell phone, you know, how old is so-and-so? It'll tell me. If I ask them where they live, well, they live here. If I ask my, my cell phone just thinks it knows everything. And you got to remind your cell phone, you don't know everything. Sometimes your cell phone knows your Bible better than you do. Where does that say that by his stripes he's healed? Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. Don't be outplayed by a cell phone. Get that stuff on the inside of you. Sir, this is amazing. This is wonderful, isn't it? Yes. It just left just left yeah the, the pain in the shoulder and the neck but I came here for the heart and for is the pain the still there no it's gone the pain in the neck is gone too yeah oh <laughs> touch him by that oh come on give God a shout quickly yes ma'am um I've been fighting a concussion since August yes and um what happened I was in a car accident, fractured wrist, concussion, uh -huh. and uh, I was at your service at the school and the service last night. Yes. I was really off balance. I wasn't walking very straight. And so I just sat there and received, and I woke up fine today. You just sat in the presence. Presence is always before power. If you're after power, but you're not going after presence, you're going to get things all convoluted. Before he turned the water into wine, he was present. Before the power fell on Pentecost, they were stirring up presence. The ideal way is to stir up presence, and then the power comes. It just, it just keeps everything in the proper place. Like what? Like where the power comes from. It's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you. Oh, that holy spirit. Oh, dear Jesus. Oh. Boy, that was, that was like a Joe Frazier touch right there, I'll tell you. <laughs> Come here. I had one lady just a couple meetings ago. I touched her, and I swear she walked the whole length of this church. Just just backpedaling and I just said fall here you'll save yourself all the but she was fighting it she was fighting it she gets touched and she's just and I told the usher stay with her for God's sake stay with her and he followed the whole way back to the end of the building finally she went down I said why why spend all that time It's like Jacob wrestled all night. Lose quickly to God and then go to bed. Come on, somebody. Lose quickly. What happened to you? First of all, being up here in front of all these people is a miracle in and of itself. Okay. <laughs> but no, a few months ago, my hands and my wrists 
became very painful. Uh -huh. And I'm a quilter. I, I chair a, a group for homeless angels, mm -hmm. and that was difficult to do. But right. what really saddened me is I get a lot of joy out of clapping while we sing his praises here at church. There's some of carotid arteries being healed right now. They're carotid arteries. There's blockage in your carotid arteries. That's why you're having dizzy spells. That's why you're having vertigo. That's, what's, that's what the issue is. And if you have never had your arteries checked in your carotid arteries, you're having blockage. I'd like you to come right now before we go too much further. Where are you? Hurry, hurry, just hurry. Get these opened up. You'll enjoy the rest of the evening. This, 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 this song. Wow. How long you had this? Oh, about five years. Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? It is very scary. Uh -huh. Have you had yeah. those checked? I'm getting checked on Wednesday. Well, that's too late. They'll be gone by I, then. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I've been in pain for a long time. In pain? In my neck, in my, sh in my shoulders. Where does it hurt now? Right back in here. Right where? Right back right in where? here. It's all tight. Is it Is, tight now? Yeah. Check it. What? <laughs> what? It's gone. Somebody, somebody give God a shout. Somebody, somebody give God a shout. Come on, give him a praise. I need you, Lord. Let's go. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now. Come on, every hand up. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now. I lift my hands. Lift my hands. Bow my knees. And worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now. Come on, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Oh, I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Lift my hands, bow my knees, and worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. To need him is to love him. Because one of the first things that comes out of people's mouths when they don't love anybody, I don't need you. I don't need you and you. I don't I can make it without you. I can make it without the church. I can make it without my wife. I can make it. I don't need that. See, those kind of words reflect the shallowness of the love that's there. The fact that you don't need somebody means you need them even more than you realize you do. And letting him know, letting him know that you need him. I was driving down the highway not long ago and, and I was just saying, Lord, I love you, I adore you, I praise you. I was just doing what I thought was worship. And, and the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, Billy, why, why do you love me? It so startled me and I said, well... I love you because you're God. I love you because you died on the cross. I love you. And I just went down everything I could think of. And it wasn't good enough. He said, why? He kept saying, why do you love me? It shook me up so much I pulled the car over and stopped the car, turned the motor off. It really shook me up. I said, well, I love you because 
I was always taught to love you. I was always, you're God. You're your first place. I just came up with everything, and it, I could, and then it hit me. I love you because I need you. I really need you. We don't come here and get healed not to need Him. We don't go to church and learn everything not to need Him. Because preachers learn how to preach. Singers learn how to sing. People in here learn how to do your job. If you sell cars, you learn how to do it. But if you don't need Him, then you're not getting that extra touch of favor on everything you do. It's needing Him to sell those cars. It's needing Him even at your highest skill set that brings in that excellence, that brings in presence. How about, how about signing a car contract and presence is on it? It wasn't because you didn't know how to, but you brought presence to the table. Or that piano that you sold, and you watch it go out the door, get loaded on the truck, it goes into somebody's home. And here you needed God to help you get that deal. But when that piano arrives in that home, it's got presence on it. It happens to waitresses. It happens to every walk of life. I need you to get me through the day. I need you to live with this man that is brutally treating me the wrong way. I can't do this anymore. See, grace comes after you express that need. When the Garden of Eden closed, automatic stopped. Come on, say, nothing automatic. Nothing automatic. Everything has to be appropriated. And it begins by saying, I, I, I need you. And if you can't say that, then you've grown so far independent. You're trusting in chariots and horses and in your strength. And that's a scary thing these days. You're trusting in your ability to use your skill set or whatever you do for a living. Get back to zero and say, man, I need you, Lord. I'm dealing with people that come to our services, normal things. They can't swallow anymore. They can't swallow anymore. Everybody swallows. All of a sudden, I can't swallow, Billy. I, something's wrong in my throat. And they have to stretch my throat. I can't swallow. I can't sleep. One man came. He's been up for five weeks nonstop. You know, you go home. You don't think anything of it. He couldn't sleep for five weeks. I said, well, you need, you need to ask him to help you sleep. Why would I ask the Lord to help me sleep? Because it's getting darker out there. Come on, Daniel chapter 12 says the wicked are getting more wicked. But the righteous are getting more righteous. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. One lady said their love life was terrible. I said, well, is your husband here? She said, he's sitting right back there. He won't come up. I said, sir, would you come up? I just want to talk to you a minute. He come walking up. I said, she says, your love life is terrible. He says, well, it probably is. I said, well, why do you think it's terrible? He said, well, I lather down with Ben Gay every night. I said, well, Ben Gay's a killer. Come on, somebody. Ben Gay. It'll help your knee, but kill your love life. Come on, say Amen. He said, what do you want me to do? I said, have you prayed? Have you asked? Have you said, I need you? Is there any express of you going to a holy, all-knowing God? That's why you get born again. So you don't need a building and a preacher, but you get connected. You come here because you want to. But you carry the burning bush with you. Come on, say, I carry presence. Come on, say, I'm a carrier of the glory. Everywhere I go, the altar goes with me. The secret place goes with me. Come on, say the presence is an unstoppable force. Come on, give God a shout right now. Come on, you gotta. You gotta quit just wanting to visit the glory and carry it. We don't know what the future holds. What happened when the pandemic hit? People fell apart. 
because of the physical structure changed. They couldn't handle not having a meeting place. Man, get a traveling phone booth. I mean, find out that God's kids with you everywhere you go. And when you talk, He hears. When you pray and cry out. Oh my. I've been in the burn unit. I've been in cancer wards. I've been in this all my life. And to hear the groaning sound of pain. It's horrible. But to hear the sound of somebody crying out to Jesus. Because they've reached their maximum limit. And they want to see so bad. They want the pain to leave so bad. One, one girl told me in Wisconsin, she cried. She cried standing in front of me out of Chicago. She said, I shoot myself five times a day with needles. I'm tired of needles. I said, okay, let's pray. She said, do you understand what I'm saying, Billy? I'm tired of needles. I, I got it. I, it hit me. But sometimes that's where we have to get. Where we're just tired of the way things are. And we've got to resort to Him. But I, if I was you tonight, I would abbreviate the suffering and go to him quickly. If your wife sees you doing that, she won't think less of you. She'll be thrilled that there's somebody besides you next to her. Come on, say amen. amen. Having him there is better than car insurance, life insurance. Just knowing that he's in the midst of your household, your family. That you have a go-to person. His name is Jesus. How many love Jesus here tonight? We just, we just got to really, in this hour especially, this great falling away is taking place. We're watching it. We're watching people be plucked out of our midst. People panicking because of diagnosis. People running for a vaccine, running for a booster that have never opened up their Bible, never called on the stripes. They know about the stripes, but never called on the stripes. You got to call on it. Test it for yourself. It works. He will show up. It may shock you. His presence may linger longer in your bedroom than you want him to. You may run out in the kitchen to get away from him. And dear God, he's in the kitchen too. And he's in the living room. I think, where can I go that he is not? You can't go anywhere. Did you ever try and get away from yourself? You can't. I flew the whole way to California to get, take a break from me. When I got there, I was there. I'm serious. I'm thinking, dear God, everything's the same. He said, because you can't get away from you. And you can't get away from me. Surrender. Surrender each and every day of your life. And that's not just a word or a cliche. Use those words. Dear Jesus, Master, Holy One of Israel, my Redeemer. Act like you know Him. Act like He's in there. Act like you're in covenant with Him. He's the, he wants to do nothing but heal you, restore your years, give you back your dreams that you lost, your axe head that you can't find. He's in here to give you back everything and more. He's here to give you back your strength, your money. Come on, somebody. But you just can't, for the rest of your life, just sit in church and receive all that. You've got to enter into this with, who is Jesus to you? Who am I to you, Peter? Well, some say, well, some, no, who am I to you? But some say, who am I to you? Thou art the, and then what did Jesus say? You, you know where you could have known this. By Peter acknowledging that about Jesus, Holy Ghost opened up the heavens to him. Come on, say, I'm one step away from an open heaven give God a shout come on one step Powerful. that's a mighty touch of the Holy Ghost come on give God a big big shout wow this was this morning what tell the people what happened to you so I came up and I had been from, from when I was in high school, I had issues with my feet that went into my knees, that went into my wrists, and then it settled the last bow about six months ago, it was into my thigh. Um, I told my 
specialist about it. He said there's really nothing you can I do. Expect. Wait, uh, wear you know wear looser clothes. There's nothing you can do about your muscle issue. And uh, from what I understood, it was fibromyalgia starting in my leg. And you had said that, and I, I came up and you laid hands on me. I don't really remember the hands part, <laughs> but I, I remember the waking up. Did part. you hear what he said? He was out. He went down for the count. That big guy right there. Yeah, I was out. Has that ever happened to you quite like that? Um, not quite like that, no. I mean, my wife hit me with a pan. It's different. <laughs> but so I was talking to Laura afterwards, and, and you had said... Um, we kind of live with these things and we label it and she she so I had labeled everything that I had been going on and saying it's because of my diabetes that oh, this boy. was why this was happening and I took your advice instead of going home and watching t uh, the football game I went to fix my daughter's car I walked around my yard for about two hours just standing on the word so <laughs> so it even gets better so I'm, I'm, I'm shaving before I'm coming here tonight and I'm standing in the mirror and all of a sudden, I feel my leg just start going, the pain that I get in that muscle. And I remember what you had said, and I said, by his stripes, I'm healed. And then instantly went away again. Instantly. Come on! Come on! Not any other. See, you got your fight back. Absolutely. You got your fight back. I do. Is your wife here tonight? No. Not tonight. No. She's uh, she's at work. But I did bring my sister. Mm -hmm. I believe you've turned a corner. I know. I believe I've from a here corner. forward, from here forward, you know who's in your life and why. I do. You no more tears. You want wheat. You want givers, not just takers. You know, you want to you wanna really protect this progress yep. until these roots run a little bit deeper. Because you've been robbed for a long time. Almost my whole life. Mm -hmm. This one touch removes all those years of abuse. I see it in your eyes. Mm. Your name is higher. is missing every time I see you. Hi. How you doing? What, what's new tonight? Well, I went home from this morning service and I spent the afternoon imagining. You did. It's a secret weapon. That's where pornography lives. That's why pornography has such a hold on people. It releases the imagination. It, it's invaded space where the anointing belongs. There's only so much space in this building. Why do you want half of it to be bad stuff and half of it to be good stuff? When it can all be good. It can become a force of righteousness in your life. It's not just looking at something. It's whenever you get involved in that. It just has a way of gaining roots, gaining strength inside your head. And you don't even want to think about it. You think about it. When you get set free from that. that so you, had your, you used your imagination the right way. Yeah. And? Well, we've knocked the giant down. Now we've got to take his head off. <laughs> what did God say to Abram? on the plains of Mamre when he said Sarah would have a baby and she laughed. Is what anything too hard? I know God. the Bible a little bit. For God. 
Is anything too mm -hmm. hard for God? Glory. You're a different man, though. I mean, you before you had a cane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. How's your breathing throughout the day? Is that improving? It's still difficult. Okay. But we're going to take his head off. I love it. I love it. Amen. Amen. He I mean, saved me from the bear and he saved me from the lion. And now he's going to save me from this Philistine. What's the matter with this place? You, you could come up here to get a healing. I mean, listen to me. Instead of getting a healing, he puts a new sword in your hand. Instead of getting a healing, he just says, I have no offense with you. I don't condemn you. Go your way. The altar is not just about what you want. The altar is about what he wants. It's an exchange. And sometimes you get everything you want. And sometimes you get something different. This guy's got fight. I wouldn't want to mess with this guy right now. It's powerful. God is on my You came the first night over at the Gilead, right? Yeah, yeah. And you had a, he couldn't hardly walk. Careful, sir. Careful. Ma'am, how are you, ma'am? Ma'am, how are you? How are you? How are you? How's those neck, cousin? You okay? I am. I don't feel it. You don't feel what? I don't feel the tightness. I don't feel the soreness. I'm dizzy. I just woke I just got up too fast. Those, are, those carotid arteries were opened up. So when you go get checked, they won't find anything there. If they would have found it, they'd have to get in there and drain that. Thank you. You might even have to have surgery. Mm -hmm. You got healed tonight and kept your clothes on. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, give God a big, big shout. <laughs> you okay? Just winded. A little winded. I'll leave you love them, don't you? I do. Yeah. I want to be about Father's business. Oh, osteoporosis being healed. Osteoporosis. L4 and L5 being healed. Where are you? Quickly, come. L4, L5. L4, L5. Come. Just don't wait. God, grab this. There's some people here. They'll take every healing. They'll take your healing, too, if you don't. This mighty touch, quickly. This mighty touch. We give God the praise. Yes. Come on, ma'am, in the blue. I've never met you before, lady. Hurry. What are you after here for, ma'am? What are you after? Oh, what's happened to you? Huh? Are you okay? I was at 20 years old. I was in an automobile accident. I was crushed. You were crushed from where? From my waist down. And so how is it? What's, what's that mean? So, this is, what? was broken and it's all hurting and, and this is all, is it hurting now is my psych my sciatic is it hurting now yes you sure got a vertebrae who are you i'm her daughter okay she has a vertebrae that just a few months ago tipped and and uh a, okay. a lot of in the three but are you hurting this moment yeah check it just make sure check i it. can feel it check it for me okay what do you want me to do just do move around do something you couldn't do something i couldn't do yeah well i do it anyway or well, just do it not. do it <laughs> Because I have to. Because I have to move. You talk too much. Just go ahead. <laughs> Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Your name is Jesus. But I call you. I call you Lord. Come on, his name. Your name is higher. Say it. Your name is higher. Come on, than any other. Than any other. Your name. Your name is Jesus. 
What's that mean? Uh, what? How we feel? <laughs> My butt hurts. Your butt hurts. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's what it is, right across there. Down my leg. But the rest of you is not hurting. The rest of you. From here up, I feel great. From here down, and, I feel terrible. And, you, and it still hurts from there down. Yeah. Are you sure? Nothing's changed. Well, I don't know about this. Well, walk, just walk back here. You're going to test it, ma'am. If you can walk any, I'll just. Your name is higher. Than Look at that. That's it. Your name is Jesus. That's it. Your name. Your name is Lord. Your name is higher than any other. Than any other. Pretty good. It's not bad. Huh? It's not bad. It's not bad. Hurts, but it's better. It's going to be healed. It's better. Is that right? Yep, I think. Let's give her a big God bless you. Come on. Let's give her a big God bless you. Bless you. Your name is high. Come on, than any other. Than any other. Your name. Come to me. Come to me. You guys. You guys. Come to me. Right here. You both. Come. 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 Come with her. What brings you guys here tonight? We just love watching miracles. <laughs> Feel great. <laughs> Is this your church? Or? Yes. Yeah. Put your hands up. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you for this. The Bible says that God puts a white stone in your crown when you are an overcomer. He rewards you with a white stone. In other words, it's presence. There's levels of presence that is released to you that God allows to be more tangible around you with the price you pay, the faithfulness that you live out here. You know, there's a presence that people pick up around you. You know, there's no water coming from me. There's rivers. Yeah, but there's no water. Those rivers are presence. Come on, say presence. You know, people don't need to feel you. They don't need any more personality. They need the presence. And when that presence comes from you, ladies and gentlemen, it changes everything. People walk away from you and they're rewired and don't know how. They're challenged by God and don't know how it happened. They didn't even go to church. They just ran into you at Starbucks. They just said, hey, how you doing? Good morning. And then just a wave of glory passed by them. How does that intensify? Just by overcoming. We're not called to be survivors. We're called to be overcomers. Come on, say, I'm an overcomer. That power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, give God a shout. Give Him a mighty praise. There will be more presence around you. Get ready for people to feel some form of an enigma. They may not even know what to say. They may say, what perfume are you wearing? What cologne are you wearing? Did you have your teeth fixed? Was your nose rearranged? <laughs> and they don't realize what they're picking up is a scent from the Spirit. That they, Jesus said, I have a food that you don't even know about. It's a secret food. That you don't even know where I get this food. Yet he wants to reveal that to us. These, these two right here are going to carry that. They're going to carry that. Come on. Somebody better get a little bit happy.
going to be amazing. It's going to, it's going to open the door for ministry. That's what it's for. It's, it's, it's going to open up the door for you to begin to visibly share what Jesus means to you, where he brought you from, what he's doing in you. Just get ready for all that. But the, 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 but the prelude is going to be they feel something around you. Some people will think it's natural. They, they don't know how to, they, people don't know how to reach spiritual force. They just see the outward person. They think, oh, wow, look at that. Or, hey, look at his muscles. And look at her nice hair. But it's way more than that. When you get a little closer, that presence takes over. Come on, say, my inward overpowers my outward. Give God a big shout. Come on, give God a big shout. Thank you. Come on, give him a mighty shout. Where's that L4 and L5? That L4 and L5, there was, there's, where, where, right here. Tell me about it. Um, uh, I had an accident maybe 15, 20 years ago yeah. or so, and I've had tremendous amount of pain in uh -huh. my neck, which I believe is the C4, C5. Uh-huh. It still hurts. Oh, it kills. Huh? Yeah, I've got there and then lower back as well. How long you had all this? <sighs> 10, 15 years, oh, and I was just diagnosed. Touch her, touch her, touch her. See now, see I'm looking at this lady on the floor. She's she's really in she's out, but she's not completely out. When you're not out, don't just lay there. Oh Lord, I receive it. I I, I receive you. I thank you. You're in that horizontal position for one reason to communicate. God can't get a hold of us most of the time when we're on our feet. We don't have time for Him. We're busy with life. So He brings you to a church that still believes in this. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, give Him a... Very powerful, this lady right there, getting healed of the, of the L4, L5. What's going on here? I've been fighting osteoporosis for over three years. Fighting what? Osteoporosis. Oh, that's bone density. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how long have you had this? That I know of. Um, Where do you hurt the most with this? My spine. Hurting now? My spine. It's, it's better than it was. I've been doing it. Well, let's just get it all the way back. Oh, my God. Man. Oh, Lord. Oh, ma'am, it's all through you. It's all through you. Ma'am, I want you to release some people that really banged you up pretty good. Just release those people. This pain has gone down into your bones. The Bible says words go into your belly and make war. Come on, say words. words. Go into your belly and make war. Now, words won't show up on an x-ray. And they won't show up in a blood test. But that's what the scriptures teach. The power of words, because things that have been said to you over the years, they affect you. Bring her up here. How do we feel? That was great. That was great. <laughs> well, you look a little happy. I am a little happy. Just a little. Release those people. Release those, whoever, whatever those, I don't want to know them. Just, just release them. Okay. It's not worth it. Thank you. It's not worth it. God can't judge them if you still have them. Release them. Okay. Come on, give God a big shout, everybody. Yeah, quickly. Come on, sir. What do we have here? What's this? I had surgery seven weeks ago. Seven, you had surgery when? Seven weeks ago. Uh -huh. What was the surgery? I had a uh, seven-inch opening in my back. They put a cage There's in polyps it. on a guy's colon here being wonderfully scraped off. That's the pain you're having down in the lower abdominal area. It's a man. You're here tonight. You've been having pain down there. Those are polyps growing with, on your colon. I'd rather you get them removed here. God will scrape them right off. You won't even have to have surgery. You're in the room tonight. Come on, get up here. Get up. Don't wait. Don't wait for this. So tell me, how, you had surgery for what? I had, uh, they put a crown or a cage on my spine. Are you hurting there? I'm hurting. It goes down the back of my legs. But all why is this on calves. you right here? For the surgery, I had to have it on for another six more weeks. Oh, 
So, not so like what if you still took it off? I still haven't, pardon me? What if you took that off? What would happen? It would be a little wobbly. Wobbly? Yeah, well, you know, because of pain. No. What if you took it off and there was no pain? Find out. Imagine that. I expect a miracle. Come on, somebody got to give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Oh, nothing is impossible for those who believe and say. Your wife, is she here? Where's the wife at? Come up here and ask him. Give him a bear hug. Oh my, oh. Okay, all right, all right. What do you think of that? Have you ever seen him like this? I've never seen him in pain in a long time. How about with yeah. this, these eyes red like this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Not for, yeah, for Jesus. <sighs> no pain. No pain. No pain, Lord. Where do you go to church? Here, at, oh, I go here and New Hope Church down the road. You go two churches. Yeah. So only it takes two pastors to saddle you. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> of course, it, Laura, huh? Laura's been uh, the way she's been pastoring has kind of drawn me back to this church. This yeah. mighty touch of the Holy Spirit on the other side. Wow. That power's all over you. That power's all over you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The Holy Ghost is all over you. Fibroid tumors are leaving. Fibroids, fibroids are leaving. Fibroids are leaving. And mighty power. Come on, give God a shout in this place. Somebody's having tremors. You're having tremors, like from palsy, from parking tremors. Come on, come on, quick, come on, quickly. What do you want to do? You got a healing. What do you want to stand here for? <laughs> we need this space. This is valuable space right here. Take your brace and get out of here. Come on. Come on, give God the shout in this place. <laughs> Tremor. Oh, my. What, how long have you had that? Familial tremor or essential tremor, they call it. What's it connected Gosh. to? What's the cause of it? The brain. It's hereditary. But how long have you had it? Gosh, 15 plus. 15 years? Years, yeah. And it just keeps getting worse. And the left's better. but the That's right, better? No, the left hand's better. It's just when you turn in a certain way, and then it'll calm down. It's like. Well, that's not normal, you know. I know. I know. And what about you? You have tremors. Oh, look at you. You what? I have essential tremors. What's that from? From medication that I'm on that um, helps my brain. Uh huh. No, I, I didn't want to do this. I heard it. Before I touch either one of you, I heard it. I have no reason to, to do this. But evidently, he knows you're here. He's going to jump on this nervous system. He's going to impact both of your bodies. You're in high demand. 
You are in high demand. I said, you're in high demand. Come on, somebody. Somebody get there to give God a shout. Just put your hands on your belly. Lay them on your belly. Lay them on your belly. It's going to go away. Lay them on your belly. Just lay them there. They'll stop. This Holy Spirit's going down deep into the nervous system. This has affected your womanhood. It's affected everything that you've dreamed to do and be. It's over. This is your night for a miracle. Your night for a miracle. One hand is okay, and now it's coming over to the other hand. Just relax, lady. Don't be afraid. Everybody's watching, but don't worry about that. <laughs> look at that, Melanie. Look at this. Look at it. You got a camera here? You got a camera? A guy with the camera? You got a mobile camera? You need to get a mobile camera here. If you're going to do this stuff, you need to get a guy right there. Look at this. Can you take that off the rack? He's doing it. Can you take that off the rack? He's trying. I don't see him vibrating. Do you see any vibrating? Looks like give them each a pillow and a blanket and they're ready for bed. That's what that looks like. There we go. Thank you, sir. Thanks for that extra effort. Thank you. It's because the power of God hit both of you. What did he say? I have need of you. There's people around you that do not believe in the Jesus that you serve. They think you're crazy for putting all this time into church. And they look at you and they see the tremors and they laugh and they think your God don't, your God don't work. He said the same thing to Elijah. Where's your God? Where's the fire? Elijah said, you go first. And they went first. Nothing happened. And Elijah stepped away and he said, God, send down the fire. And the fire was so hot it burnt water. It burnt the bricks. It burnt the sacrifice. And then God gave the other, go kill every one of those prophets. Chase them down to the river and kill every one of them. God today is into silencing voices. There's voices that are so spreading such liberal baloney. God's about to silence a lot of these voices. Come on. Come on. Now. Woo! Somebody better give God a shout in this place. Amazing. Amazing. Hers are completely gone. Hers are just about gone. And they're going to go all the way. All the way. Why? Because he said they would. He said, call it out. Anything he calls out isn't something that's going to happen. It's something that is happening. But it's up to your level of receiving it. You have to say, boy, don't say, is that me? Say, that's me. You know, if, if you have to get ahead of somebody else, if they're a little slow in claiming it, so be it. You get up here and take yours, theirs, and the neighbors. Come on, somebody. This... I wouldn't come out of the balcony. I said to Catherine Kuhlman, I said, no. And she said twice, you get down here, young boy. I said, no. The third time, she said, ushers, get him down here. Now, two ushers came up, Donnie and, uh, and Norm, and they came up, and I knew them. I knew them later. I didn't know them that day. And they said to my grandmother, Miss Kuhlman wants him. It was that simple. She called it out. She wanted you there. And my grandmother said, take him. Just take him. 
Who's with this girl? Who's with this young girl here? Anybody? You're with her? Who is that to you? She's your wife. Just stay right there. You were just up here, weren't you? Boy, God's working on your family tonight. Just pick her up. Just pick her up. Pick her up, too. Pick her up, too. Put your hands on my hands. Put your hands on my hands. Lay your hands flat on my hands. Come on. Now there's... You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. It's over. You feel it slowing down, don't you? Yeah, it's improving. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It is. Where do you go to church? Ward Evangelical Church in North. Where at? North Evangelical Presbyterian Church. W where's it located? North. Northville. Northville. Just say, I surrender. I surrender. I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever. I'll share everything. I'll share everything. There's the power. Get it. The power's going on there again. Get it. 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 Yeah. Just put those hands on your belly. That's all leaving. You're going home tonight as calm as can be. Where's yours at? Where's yours at? Oh, my. Oh, my. Put them on my hands. Oh my. Look at that. What do you see? Calmness. <laughs> Calmness. Calmness. Is that a word in Scrabble? Calmness. I don't, I don't know. even know. <laughs> I hear so many things at the altar. Calmness. 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 It's a new day for you. It's a new beginning for you. You don't go back. You throw some Jonas out of your boat. You can't keep some people in your boat. This is the cause of, there it is. See, it's, look, it's gone. Look at that. It's gone. It's gone. It's just gone. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, give him a shout. That mighty power. Yes, what is this? Um, I just have a testimony. I was um, at the Gilead Center, yes. Center on um, Saturday morning. Yes. And life has thrown me some pretty hard punches. Okay. But... I ended up with a roundhouse from the Holy Spirit that oh. I have never got before. A roundhouse. It was amazing. <laughs> I've it never heard of anybody amazing. getting a roundhouse. <laughs> well, I've home. never been knocked out by the Holy Spirit. Wow. And so when I went down, it was, it was just amazing. And then when I tried to get back up again. You couldn't get up. I, then I went right back down. Um, but you were talking about open, opened doors, and uh -huh. sometimes we open doors that are not intended. And you talked about um, Hosea 6.1, mm -hmm. and then you talked about um, you remember. 26, uh, Proverbs 26.1, 26, about, 26, about the fluttering bird mm -hmm. that goes to its victims. Curse and don't it's come without it. a cause. Yes, and, um, and so I just wanted to share a word from the Lord that he gave to me. Maybe it could help. Somebody. Go ahead, go fire away, girl. Come Hosea two fourteen. He says, "But then I will win her back once again. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her there. I will return her vineyards to her and transform her valleys of trouble into a gateway of hope, as I did when she was young, when I freed her from captivity. She will give herself to me there. And when that day comes, I says the Lord, instead of calling me my master, she will call me." My my husband. Beautiful. Come on, give God a shout. So, see, there you have a case where one prophetic word unlocked another prophetic word. Stuff gets jammed up in here. It gets all locked up and God has, gets your, has to get your faith unlocked. That's why the crippled man at Lystra, he was crippled, but Paul perceived he had faith. Well, if he had faith, why was he still crippled? Paul looked at a man who couldn't walk from his mother's womb. He looked and he said, he can't walk, but he says, I perceive you have faith. 
You're starving to death, but I perceive you have a refrigerator full of food. What was the problem? His faith needed unlocked. There's faith here tonight that's getting unlocked just by watching what's happening. God will unlock your faith. There's different things that unlock your faith. No one is being unlocked and don't shut it down. Go, go for it. Grab it. Whatever that is. Eyes, vision is getting better in this room. There's eye, vision problems getting better. Glaucoma and demacular. You're looking at me, but some of your eyes, if you would just check a little bit, quit staring at me and check your own eyes. Come on, somebody. Some of your eyes are getting better. Your vision is improving, sitting right where you are. Who is this? It's what's happening? Yeah. But I can see great great Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? That Hosea is for me. I want my vineyard back. And I know that God promised me that. And I know that he's been telling me he's going to fully restore my youth. Everything that was taken from Beautiful. me. Beautiful. I believe that. I have all the things that God has promised me stored up in my heart, and he promised to give me the desires of my heart. And Hosea, when you spoke that out the other day, it was that I, I, I tore them, but I will heal them. Yes. I know that's for me. Good girl. And just her speaking that, and, and the words that I've been getting all weekend from all the people that have been letting the Lord minister You're, you're to collecting them. all of this, yes, aren't you? Yes, and I know that... that I'm not going to leave the way that I came. Oh! Yes! That mighty power! Somebody give God a shout! Come on, somebody! Some, what's the matter with this place? What's the matter with this place? for you when someone like this gives everything I mean she's under the power in the chair the girl's not moved this is your wife what a wife you have best one there is she's really out it's the second time today that she that she's she fell this morning like yeah, that I believe yeah She's yielded. She's open. She's willing to prove it. And that's the beginning of God getting in there. You know, we don't know how long it took for that seed to go down the trunk of the fig tree to get to those roots. We don't know what kind of root you're rooted with. We don't know. Yes. When you said a root, she, uh, I had a tree. We're landscapers, and I had a tree she did not like in our front yard, and I planted that tree. She's, she cursed that tree, and then I was out there watering it. I had the hose in the ground watering this tree to keep it alive. <laughs> and within, like, two days, the tree was completely dead. Every needle, it was a pine tree, every needle fell on the ground. And so... Our five-year-old ripped it out of the ground with the excavator, so it's gone now. So, but she, she, she cursed it; and it was gone. Power in that tongue. Why don't we do more of that to ourselves? Look in the mirror and, and just break some. Don't curse you, but curse the stuff that has a hold of you. Hey, you. How are we doing here? I, I think I'm doing better. Huh? <laughs> I'm doing better. You are doing much better. 
Yeah, look at was, you. My, look that at this. man was the worst. That actually. was the worst. Was not yeah. even hardly doing anything. Yeah. Are you glad you come tonight? I'm very glad I came. <laughs> and where'd you come from? Where, where at? Livonia, Michigan. And how far away is that? Um, it's about an hour drive. Look at this. Drive. That's how far? About an hour's drive. Yeah. How'd you hear about the meeting here? Um, well, I think from your website. Maybe, okay. Or? Okay. Oh, from yeah. Gilead. Okay. Where's the voice I hear? Okay. Okay. Right there. <laughs> okay. She's a beautiful girl you have here. You love her? Do you treat her right? Okay. Look at this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Do you know the Bible says that the moment that Jonah's body hit the stormy sea, the moment, the moment, the moment his body touched the sea, everything went calm. And the mariners said, they, I believe. We've got to become a little bit more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When you see something like this, there shouldn't be one person leave this meeting tonight that doesn't say yes to Jesus. Of surrendering your life. You have to be amazed. I, I've been wanting the healing for that for years now. For yeah, and I need um, healing for chronic fatigue syndrome. Also. Oh, your lady, it's all through you. Okay, well, that's he don't good. go in there I and just touch it. one thing. He's restoring your whole place. Awesome, that's wonderful. <laughs> wow, wow. Look at this. Look at this. Your name is high. I don't know what to say. Oh, your mighty name. Your name is Jesus. Your name. Your name is Jesus. Just a minute. You, you say, why do you get so excited? Don't you see that? Yeah, I do see it all the time. But you know what I work at? What I cultivate? I still want to always be impressed with God. I don't want to ever get to where a lot of Christians are. Well, that's what God does. What do you expect? That's my Jesus. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Why do people keep buying the new iPhones? Because the new one impresses them. This has a better lens, a better camera, better whatever. Man, your God has done everything he can to impress you. There's other things going to happen. Don't leave yet. There's still some other things about to happen, but this here to me, wow. Wow. W-O-W, -W, spell it backwards, it still says W-O-W. -W. <laughs> this looks like I get excited over my own cooking. I can't cook this. This is not me. This is not my handiwork. I, I, I have shallow days. I'm an imperfect vessel. I didn't want to do this. I ran from this calling. Catherine Kuhlman had to call my house. She had Maggie call. I had to call my house, had, tell Billy to meet me. I said, told my grandmother, no, I am not going. And my grandmother says, yeah, he'd love to come and meet Miss Kuhlman. I said, I'm not going. I was just like throwing invisible stones at my grandmother. What time does she want Billy to meet her? I said, I don't, I'm not going. I and I ran out the door. And I came home that night. And she said, Sunday at 3 o'clock. She wants you at the Stomba Auditorium Sunday at 3. I'm not going. You'll be there. I said, why do you say that? She says, because prayer changes things. Come on, say prayer changes everything. Prayer changes things. If you're not praying, how are you expecting any change? If you're not sowing seed, how are you expecting any change? Your course of action, come on, your, your course of action is what creates expectancy in you. Praise goes up and power comes down. Seed in the ground and harvest comes back. The more you give, the more you're going to begin to expect mighty, mighty breakthrough. Weight loss, healing, deliverance. Oh, I mean, some of the devils we've seen come out of people. Charles Manson's grandson came into our service. 
several months ago. He was, and I didn't know that's who it was. And he, he said, I, you know, I, I'm thinking of suicide and killing people. And I didn't, I thought, well, this guy's pretty bad. Well, he went through a lot of deliverance. And later, one of my girls said, well, it worked for me, said, that's Charles Manson's grandson. I said, tell him to come in the back room. I want to talk to him. He said, that's my grandfather. He said, came down and I wanted to be the same thing as my grandfather. He said, but being in your meeting, being what I felt tonight, I have to have what's in this meeting. Amen. Come on. I said, come up to my office. Well, I want to get this on camera. I want to, get, I want to film it. So he came and he brought the urn of Charles Manson's ashes. And he sat it on my desk. And boy, that, that didn't test me. I said, what's that? He said, that's my grandfather's ashes. I went, oh. And then the Holy Ghost said to me that quick, Will, do you still believe you got the power? Are you afraid of a dead man's ashes? You think you're going to get the cooties because those got, that's on your desk? Or is the greater one living in you? I paused for a moment. Let me think about that for a moment. Come on, somebody. <laughs> See, it's different when, that, when that's right there. Cancer seems like the greater thing. Losing your vision, your, your memory seems like the greater thing. And it, it, it can be if you don't collect yourself and, and gather in. You've heard the old song, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the stuff that you've learned, the notes that you've taken from all your teachers and pastors. Your experiences. Aren't you cataloging God's faithfulness to you? And we sat there and I listened, we filmed it and and it was a wonderful experience. And the Holy Spirit said, don't show this footage for two years. Two years, you show nobody. And I kept it hidden. I, didn't, and I told a few people. Didn't tell many. And then I waited. And two years later, he walked into another meeting in Sarasota, a changed man. He said, my wife and I are now starting a ministry of bringing people. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, give God a shout. You know, when, I, when he brought that urn in, my secretaries all took off for the hills. Come on, somebody. And I later said, you can't be afraid of that. Yeah, we teach transfer. You can pick up stuff. But how are we going to reach darkness if we're afraid to walk in it? We've got to believe that it's going to hit us and we're going to shake off every snake. Come on, every snake. Come on, Sam, go shake off every snake. Oh, you're not with me. Every snake. We're not promised immunity, but we are promised healing. Amen. We're going to get hit. When, how, who knows? But we're going to get hit. That's just reality. We live in a dirt body. It's not a perfect world. There's germ and virus and bacteria everywhere. And the devil's unleashing stuff on the earth. Why? Because it's the end time. But we've got to show him we have some end time faith. How many have end time faith in you? Come on, say, not coming to my house. Come on. Not on my watch. You've got to start getting more vocal. It's not having faith to protect you. It's releasing it. Look at this. This lady here is amazing. That's, that's, where's the husband at again? Where did he go? Where'd you disappear to? I was trying to talk to both of you. This is amazing what's happened to your wife. You got a new woman. Years. What's that? She's been sick with chronic fatigue syndrome for years. It's over. Years. Do you understand that? Oh my God. Thank you. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I just think it's amazing. And I'm excited for you. This, uh, that's what? You feel it. Her legs are warm. All right. That's good. <laughs> Somebody got to move around a little bit. Ah! You know, rule number one with the rapture, you know what it is, right? Your feet have to leave the ground. We put on a people that in church just don't move. I'm going in the rapture. Not unless you move, get moving those practice, leaving the ground. 
This was amazing. Where do you go? You live where you told me one more time? Where? This was we worth the trip fun. then. Oh, absolutely. I made five trips and went to all the Gilead services. You went to all the Gilead? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. God's honored that. Well, thank God. God bless Praise God. God. Yes. Yeah. How are you going to celebrate this? I don't know. Um, we'll celebrate somehow. We'll go out to dinner or something. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Don't you love that? What's this? L4 and L5 and more. L4 and L5. How'd you heard it? I just, I don't know. It's regeneration. I think uh -huh. it's degeneration. So uh -huh. I don't know what you call it. You look like a happy lady. You look very happy. I am very happy. You love the Lord. I do. Put your hands up. Are you still hurting? Actually, I wanted to say um, this finger, because of my muscle, because what? My muscle, it stiffened, and it used to just go like that. Uh -huh. And I wasn't able to bend it. And now I can uh, do it. I can bend it now. You couldn't before? No, it started, I lost the muscle. Um, Amazing. Now you can smile even more. It's better. <laughs> I thank you, Holy Spirit. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Wow. Amazing. There's a thyroid healing. Your thymus gland. There's a thymus gland miracle being one. Is that you? Thyroid, yeah. Oh, yes. oh my, the power. Get this later. The power's on this woman. My God. Woo! I said it's a thymus gland. Oh, my God, she was right next to me. I, she was right there. Now she's right there. That controls so much of your body. Wow. So when's the last song you wrote? When's the last song you wrote? When's the last one you wrote, I ask you? The last one. Probably today. Do you catalog them? Yes, sir, I'm trying. I said, do you catalog them? Yes, yes. <laughs> There's a difference between trying and doing it. Yeah. I'm trying to lose weight. Stop trying and do it. <laughs> I'm trying to get free from try, Stop trying and do it. I'll take it. What? Bring in that Holy Ghost. Invite Him to the party. The reason you're not able to do it is because you're trying to do it in your own strength. If some of you would say, I need help, Holy Ghost, help me lose weight, you would lose it right here tonight. You could. We have people lose, we have people have to hold their clothes up when they go out the door. I'm telling you the truth. What's that? Oh, we're doing it right now. <laughs> and you're happy for it. I want you to get these songs cataloged. I want you to write and get them cataloged and get them copyrighted. Yes, sir. By the Holy Ghost, we just give up. Somebody give God a shout! I believe in miracles. not okay well she's still under she's standing up but she's under redeemed through Calvary I've seen I've seen the lily push its way up through the stellar come on I believe With this lady, who's with her? Is she by herself? You are. Did you know she had the thyroid condition? She what? A doctor said that. Wow, how reckless that is! Sounds like he wants to call the insurance company. <laughs> Wow. 
You like your thyroid. I, like my thyroid. <laughs> I say try and keep everything you can. That's right. Yes. How do you feel at this moment? Well, I just I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just feel I don't know how I feel. <laughs> I feel him. You feel him. I feel his love. You feel his love. His wow. His presence. Wow. His touch. Wow. He loves me. Oh my. Yes. He loves me. Amazing. Amazing. There's nothing better than that. That's right. There's no replacement for that. I believe. I believe in, in miracles. Oh, I believe in God. They wanted to take out my whole thyroid also. I they want to take no. out what? They wanted to take out my whole thyroid also in 2019, and they told them no. And then the other doctor said, "We'll take half." And I said, "No, I'm going to keep all my parts, like my great grandpa." And he lived in 90. See, I helped the lady, and Dave Williams gets all the hugs. Look at that. <laughs> you talk about fair. <laughs> don't you love Dave and Mary Jo? Don't you love them? So I asked the Lord to call out thyroid for me today. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can't regulate your body temperature. And it's hard but see, the proper thing for her to do that I would help you with, if this ever should happen to you, instead of just saying, no, you're not taking it, go home and dialogue. Say, Lord, they say they want to take it. Get in connection. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. You're going to live dependent on horizontal people all your life. Instead of going vertical. You're called to go vertical. You're called to hear him as good as you hear anybody next to you. My sheep hear. He don't lie. My sheep hear. My, not my lambs, but my voice. So she, the doctor tells her that doctors are. That's what they do. They they they're trained in natural law. They're trained in X-rays and CAT scans and you know, echocardiograms and they're trained in all that MRIs and that's how they see. We come in here and we just we get trained in another way. Nothing wrong with this. But before you get organs removed, before you get into prescription of medicine and treatments of who knows what's in half of that stuff. You say, Lord, do they say, what Hezekiah do? He laid the, the, the bad news in front of God. He, he laid all the... He said, look what they're saying. Look what they're saying. He laid the bad report out in the open for God to see it. And God said, that's, that's all lies. They're not going to conquer you. They're not going to take the city. You will finish the city, put the gates on the city, and you'll do it, what, underpriced and before ahead of time. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. If we would go there first. Now, that sounds textbook. I know it sounds, but that's what getting tight with him is. Otherwise, you fight so many battles of fear. Because those seeds of corruption get in you. And those seeds blossom and bloom, and you've got to get those seeds uprooted. That's all. I'm just trying to help you. That's what I would do if I was you. Otherwise, you're just saying, no, you, it's a reflex. No, I don't believe that. The doctor's lying. The doctor's telling you the truth as far as he knows. He can't help being a doctor. He's, he's trained in that. There's really a lump there. There's really a spot on your lung. Doctor said, there's, oh, he said that because it's there. David didn't say, what giant? I don't see any giants. He said, I see a big boy, but right behind you is a bigger God. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on. Come on, right, right behind you is a bigger God. <laughs> Denial is not faith. Denial's fear. How can you get healed of something if it's not there? You're going to be okay. Put your hands up. You're going to be all right. 
That's the power in your, that your whole body feels the Holy Ghost power tonight. And that fear is leaving you. That fear is leaving you. You've never had it that good for that long. That, you just haven't known a steady diet of goodness, but it's coming to your house. God's about to change your menu, lady. Get ready for it. Get ready for Holy Ghost Uber Eats. Come on, somebody. It's coming your way. Come on, somebody give God a big shout. Right here. Come on, sir. What's happening with you? I'm here on behalf of my wife because she has bladder cancer. Okay. And we've been praying for her for a year. We're, we're believers in Christ, spirit-filled believers. And I speak in tongues. But nothing seems to break open for us. She's now slated to have her bladder removed. Her and bladder. It's, it's tearing me up. <laughs> it is no secret, guys. It is no secret. It is no secret. What God can do. Come on, what he's done. What he's done. Oh. Every voice saying this is what he'll do for you. He'll do for you. Come on, arms wide open, everybody. Come on. With arms wide open. He'll pardon you. He'll pardon you. It is no secret. It is no secret. What God? What God? Come on, it is. It is no secret. It is no secret. What God? What God can do? What He's done. What He's done for us. He'll do for you. He'll do for you. Pardon you. Pardon you. It is no secret. It is no secret. What God? What God can do? Those polyps I said earlier. I'm still. I haven't seen anybody come up for those yet. It's a man. It's on the colon. Where are you? You at the polyps? Just excuse me, I'll get with you and your wife just a second, okay? Come with this, polyps. How long have you... What's going on here, sir? Well, the power's on him, just... To... Stay with him, just stay with him. I sit back there and you call it out, and I hesitated. But what you said matched and I hesitated some more and the Holy Spirit rose up in me and overwhelmed me so I came up yeah. I've been getting treatment I'm sorry. for a frozen shoulder uh -huh. and that's pretty much getting taken care of mm -hmm. but Earlier today, in the early service, my son has to do a lot of reading for his work. And he's losing his sight, but he don't have insurance. And he went to the doctor to get a new pair of glasses. And she said, I can't pitch you with glasses. You need to go see someone else. But he doesn't have medical coverage. Look at me, you're the dad here. So you're leading the charge here. The reason you responded tonight, because you're leading the charge for healing in your family. You're breaking the curse. You are breaking the curse. You're breaking that curse. Let him go. The power's on. Come on, somebody, you've got to shout. My God, I'll tell you about it. With arms wide open, with, with arms wide open, he'll pardon you. Bruce, that was great. There's <laughs> no secret. Come on, what God? What God can do. Come on, everybody, let's go in. It is no 
day for you. Okay, good. <laughs> the Lord told me it's my miracle day. He told you that. The Lord. Where do you live? Where do you and your wife live? Yeah, we live in Grand Blank. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It's about an hour drive from here. So, thanks for taking the time. You know, I just been so desperate. I just I need him to do a miracle. <laughs> because there's no recourse at this point. Just put your hands up. Put them up high. Put them up. What a good man you are. What a good husband you are. I don't feel that way all the time. I know you don't. I know you don't. I know all about that. I know. But, but you came here for your wife. And your heartbeat tells me you really, really, you're believing this. Yes, I do. Because of this, you're taking it home to her. Not that you just leave here with a physical embitterment. You leave here believing. Yeah. You leave here believing yeah. Yeah. that faith works on anything. Yeah. It'll jump on your money. It'll jump on your kids. Yeah. It'll jump on your dead John Deere tractor that don't run no more. <laughs> Come on. The baby doll that lost the string, your tongue will talk again. Come on. You gotta believe this. That's what a miracle is. You cannot figure it out. It makes no sense. Hold your hands up. Come on, say I'm taking no like I'm taking a miracle home. For my wife. When I touch her, it all changes. What didn't change before, before. will start changing tonight. Yeah. The next 21 days. The next 21 days, there will be a turnaround. Power. Come on, give God a shout. My God. Woo. I never would have been healed in a Catherine Kuhlman meeting had my grandmother not planted a seed of expectation in me. I mean, KK gets all the credit. That means Catherine. She gets all the credit. Because she didn't know my grandmother. But my grandmother was nobody to mess with. And she had me for four days and she said, when she touches you, when who touches me? The lady I'm taking you to, when she touches you, your cancer's gone. I never heard of her. I'd rather not have met her. I'd rather not have had cancer. Brain cancer, lung cancer, it was all through me. I had lumps that size all over my body. And she's telling me a lady's going to touch me? I thought it was crazy. Until I was standing in front of Miss Coleman. And when her hand went to touch me, I could hear my grandmother. When she touches me. That seed had been planted. See, you can plant your own seed. If you read enough Bible verses, God will plant that seed in you. If you're around the right churches and the right meetings, God will plant those seeds in you. And that's all you got to do. If, if you don't want to do it yourself, get in the shadow of people that do do it. I spent most of my life just jumping from shadow to shadow. getting those seeds planted and still not wanting to do this and here I am doing it and here I am in, 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 the, in the house of prayer in the middle of the winter I'm here in the northeast I live in Florida I 
I left my hammock and pina colada home just to come here. What's that? I'm going to Alaska in January, yeah. I'm a thinker, and I was thinking, and I'm done. I mean, I looked up the definition. You know, I was to Google everything, but <laughs> she's but, fact checking me in her seat here. Oh yeah, that's how I think. But I'm telling you, something happened the other day. I said, "Hun, was that you know bleeding in the stool?" Yeah. And I didn't even know. And that amazing. And so my eyes, my hip, this I've had all this replaced all the way up to here. So my hip and my and How my knee on this right side now? is not gonna be healed. I'm not gonna have no surgery on them because of the chiropractor lady. <laughs> That's my girl, y'all. Give to Gilead. Saving my life. That's a shout out. Alright. Thank you. You know, between Gilead and here, it's like there's, there's an interactive church. People just yell out and say what they want to say. I've never seen anything like it. It's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. How are we doing? Oh, you look different. Wow. It's almost like a tuning fork. It's like a, a tuning fork. Just I've never vibration. Heard. All through your body. Isn't that wonderful? Don't leave like that. Say, Holy Spirit, acknowledge Him. If you can acknowledge cancer and toothache and headache, acknowledge Him. Not just, I got a good vibration. People might think you're listening to the Beach Boys or something. <laughs> Come on, see, I got a Holy Ghost touch. That was the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge his presence. Call him by name. This is wonderful, isn't it? How do you feel now? Pretty good. What do you, what do you want now? <laughs> you want another touch? I want to get to my son. You want to get where? To my son. To your son. You get victory. The word was, you're, you're, care, you're breaking the curse here for the whole family. You get the victory. My wife had cornea transplants. You get the victory. So, you know, you're trying to carry listen. way too much. It's affecting you. You get the victory. It'll send a tremor the whole way down your family line. When a father dies to the sin, curse sin, it dies in every child. They don't even know why they stopped drinking. Because dad got delivered. They don't know why they stopped whoring around. Because dad got delivered. And something just stopped. That's in the Bible, by the way. Some of you look a little shocked at that word. But... Isn't this amazing? You're free, sir. You're free. No more guilt, no more guilt, no more guilt. No more shame. No more shame. No more. Time to be free. Put your hands up. Come on. What's your son's name? Jason. Say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Go get Jason. Go get Jason. Go get him. Jesus. Go get him. Go get him. Jesus. I present him to you. Amazing. Holy, holy. Let's sing that holy, holy. Holy, holy. Come on, everybody, hands up. Holy. Holy, holy. holy, holy. holy. Come on, Lord God. Oh, my. Come on, as we lift our hearts. Before you as a token of our holy. How are you? I have two requests. Go ahead. Well, one is for my knee, 
and the other is for my grandson that's getting bullied at school. Okay. That's good. Those are worth it. Precious Jesus. Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. the power on both your kids. That worry is lifting. You've covered them in prayer. Now believe it. Believe it. That no unclean hand will touch them all the day. That's it right there. Come on, as we lift our hearts. As we lift our hearts. How are we doing tonight? I'm doing good. I've dealt with neck pain. Though. You have what? I've dealt with neck pain for about nine years. Nine years? What yeah. did you do? I was in a car accident. Uh huh. Um, apparently, though, the chiropractor said I had some damage as a young child, and yeah. it just kind of flared up. That pressure behind the eyes, that glaucoma, it's pressure behind the eye. Someone's being healed of glaucoma here. Who is this? Is that you? you're being healed? Do you feel the pressure leaving? You do. Why are you sitting there? Why are you standing there? Get over here. I said earlier, get up here. Didn't I say get up here? Yes. Do you feel the pressure leaving? Yes. How long have you had glaucoma? It, it's not long. Not long. But it's not mine. I never owned it. Okay, that's good. And now it's really gone. Oh! And when I go back... Holy, 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 holy. Oh, the power's right there. Holy, holy. Oh, oh I'm going to just lay you. Come on, ma'am. Come on, ma'am. I'm here out of obedience. You're here out of obedience. Well, that sounds like you don't like me. Oh, no, sweetheart. I never met you. You how never could met I, me. How could I not like That's you? true. No, the little girl goes Did to church Did she fall down? Or? Did anybody catch her? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Her name is Whitney, and she goes to church here, and she has been delivering pet supplies. Can I, how can I help you? I was diagnosed in 2000 with a thing, a name about this long, and it eats muscle tissue. It eats muscle tissue. Only six people out of a million. Forget it. And I, they gave me seven years. Give me some space. Can give me some space? Just give me some so Over here, you're blocking the view from people. Just give me some space. Everything in your body is muscles. It falls off? Everything in your body is muscles. Uh -huh. Your heart, your lungs. So how, how, how do you feel right now? Are you in pain? All the time. But please, I'm not going home with it. Holy, holy. Holy. Holy, holy, Come on, help me, everybody. Lord, Lord God Almighty, as we lift our hearts, as we lift our hearts before you. Don't touch her yet. Don't touch her. But so can Somebody bring her. Did somebody bring her. Come up, come on up here. Who are you? You're who? Your friend, her friend. So is this pretty bad? She's pretty bad? Yeah, she's been bad for a lot of years and the disease is getting worse and God's her only hope. And she wanted to come, or you just wanted her to come? No, I, I didn't want to come. You didn't want to come? <laughs> <laughs> but she needed to be here, huh? so she needed to be here, so I brought her. She wanted to be here? Yes. Mm -hmm. And she lives where, and you live where? Where's all this? We live in Lansing. In Lansing. Right. This is why we do this. I mean, sometimes it looks a lot more glamorous than what it really is. You're exposed to death and pain and sickness and heartache every meeting. Every meeting you face the impossible. You got to get ready for that. 
whether it's sunshine, rain, snow, warm, cold, United States or the Caribbean, you, when you got to get ready to meet devils and death sentences and try and, and try and put on the people exactly what Jesus said. That's why we're all here. We spectate so we can imitate. Come on, say we spectate. spectate. So we can imitate. So we can imitate. When he said, be followers of me, the word follow in Greek means imitate. Do what I do. Say what I said. And the same powers that are subject to me will be subject to you. Amen. We're tolerating way too much. We're letting a, a, a government direct all of our path. There's way more patriots than there are Christians. I don't like to see this. I don't like to see any of this. It just refreshes my, my, my thoughts and why we're here. Why we're here at the house of prayer. Let's help her up, guys. Come on, help her up. Let's get this thing healed. Come on, let's get it healed. What's her name? Kathy. Kathy. Hey, Kathy, open your eyes. Now, don't say hi. I'm here to talk to you. Yes. Let's get healed. Yes. That's why you're here. Absolutely. You asked to come. I do. So I, you got to get all the meat and for, potatoes we can give you. you got, huh? days. I've been praying. There's a miracle, Kathy, coming to you so you don't have this anymore. That might be power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody in God is shout. Come on, give him a shout. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Stay here. Where'd that lady go? Okay. Let's get her up. Come on, let's get her up. Let's get her up. Kathy, come on, let's go, Kathy. Time to get up. Let's walk. Let's walk. Kathy, let's walk. Okay. Okay. He is. He is. You're going to live. I know it. <laughs> I knew it from the start. You bitch. I knew it. I knew it from the start. No, I was not. I was not letting the devil have this body. Do you know? I'm would you be, get moving? I'm would gonna, you get? I'm going to be 80 in, in a few months. Look at this. And, <laughs> God didn't put Moses to work till he was 80. He spent 40 years in the wilderness. Bruce, you're not helping me at all. I love it. You know that? I've been alone 40 years. I'm 80. And now I'm going to work. Let's walk. Come on, let's walk. Let's go. Help her down there. Walk, walk. Quit talking so much and walk. Just go. <laughs> Come on, give the lady a God bless you. Look at <laughs> Come on, miraculous. Because I believe. David Kokenauer, thank you for letting all this happen. Thank you. As you fight your own deal, and yet you open up your house to a God party. What do you think, that's, what do you think that means? That you open up your house for healing, and you're fighting for your own healing. What's, what does it mean? What's it going through to you? What's going into you tonight? Well, I'm just sitting here being blessed by watching all of it tonight. I want you to receive. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a lot of window shoppers in the church. I like it, I like it, but I don't want to pay the price for it. A lot of window shoppers. You're hearing people tonight that have decided to go in there and purchase and pay the price.
Because see, these people that get healed, I mean, they can't get away from God forever. God will ever remind you. I mean, once He tags you with a miracle, once He does something that you cannot do, He'll never let you forget it. He works hard just to keep you out of a devil's hell. To keep you out of a crowd out there that knows nothing about God. To keep you from giving all your money to recover. To hawk your house to pay for a medical bill. There are so many thieves out there. In the name of goodness, they're thieves. And they're wrong. And they're raping our nation. In the name of God. Jesus said, possess your own soul. Come on, say, I got a mind. I can think for myself. And what God says for me to do, what God says for me to believe, I will lay hold of that. That is my core values. I will fight for that. I will live for that. I will give my life for that. Come on, give him a mighty shout. Who's excited here? I don't like it. I've been around so many family, friends, Christian leaders, watching the government wait till they get sick, wait till they can't afford treatment, and then leverage your house and we'll treat you. And then this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And all the bad people's in China. And yet what we do to our own people. We need a jubilee. We need a jubilee. We need to exterminate some stuff. Excuse me, I'm just getting a little bit. This, this gets to you after a while. Where'd that lady go, by the way? Where did she go? Where did she go? Kathy's her name. Oh, my God! You what? These aren't my shoes. They're not? No. I didn't have any nice shoes. Where'd you get them? A friend loaned them to me, but they're two sizes too big. That's why I'm, they're my clown shoes. <laughs> well, we want some money to pay for a new pair of shoes for her, okay? Come on, we're going to get her a new pair of shoes. You just ran up this aisle. You know what, you know what else? The, the girl in the, in the uh, hallway, just a second. I, I'm not used to breathing. That's okay. Um, I would come here just to watch all this, you know. I was. Oh, no. oh. What's that? How much did he give you? I don't know. Dave <laughs> Williams gets all the hugs and she gets all the money. <laughs> anyway, she prayed for my arm. I, my rotator cuff was gone. Yeah. It, the muscle stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, so she prayed in the hall. Beautiful. I have been able to root with this arm for months. You're just getting all kind of healing. I deserve it. <laughs> he touched me. Come on, let's sing it. He touched me. Come on, everybody. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that loves my soul. Something. Something. Now I know. Now I know. He touched me and made me warm. And since I met my blessed Savior, oh, get up. Me. I will never cease to praise him. I will never cease to praise him. Come on, I'll shout. 
in my back uh-huh. been that way for 30 years but it's gotten to the point now where I can't straighten my neck and I'm having severe pain here I can take the pain anywhere else in my body but this I'm gonna touch you when I touch you I just want you to look left move left okay. I want you to help me okay. I'm gonna touch I'm not gonna move your head I'm gonna tell the power is gonna go in you okay. it's gonna loosen up your bones and you just move left that's what left is I think <laughs> You haven't looked that way for a long time. It's been a long time. I'll tell you, this house of prayer, am I saying that right? Yes. It's being visited. I don't know who here needs a church, doesn't have a church, but to find a place like this where you have a pastor and leadership and music that opens up these altars, it's getting more rare by the month. The meetings like in A.A. Allen's days once again will be driven to the auditoriums. And the church is almost saying we don't want this. We're so afraid of whatever. But God won't stop. This is part of who God is. He doesn't do supernatural. He is supernatural. So it will always be until that great catching away. But thank God you have a place right here that you could come and go to church and learn, bring your children. This is as small as this will ever be. It will grow. It will grow. Did you hear what I said? You know, some of you, some of you people that really sense you're being pulled maybe in this direction, call the church this week and meet with the pastor. He's right over here. Say, what can I do to help? I'm a carpenter. I'm an electrician. I'm a painter. I do carpet. You know, I, 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 I drew, I'm an architect. Whatever. I'm just a laborer. I want to help the vision. There's more than a building here. There's a vision here. I mean, I think we're streaming tonight, aren't we streaming tonight? This is going all over the world. Whoever thought we could do this in such an hour without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars? The gospel is getting out. This could be a place where you get set free in weeks to come. We could just be priming the atmosphere for you later on. Who knows what strongholds we're breaking here tonight? 
When I stood in front of Miss Coleman, my family had never given her any money. I didn't know that till later. I had never given her any money. I didn't have any. But nobody in my family supported her. But we sure went there for help. But I thought later, somebody had to pay her to be there for me. Somebody gave her money. Somebody had to give her money. Sometimes you're setting the table for people you don't know. Come on, say, my prayers, my, prayers. my, faith. my faith, my giving, my, giving. my, love, support. my love support. You're setting the table for who knows the people that have yet to walk into a place like this. Don't shut up your bowels of compassion. Don't leave here till you drop a seed. I said a seed. I didn't say the whole farm. Calm down. A seed. What you've seen here tonight, nobody can afford. You can't afford it. You don't have enough money. Sow a seed. Please do that for the sake of this man and his family and all they've had to do to dig this out of the ground. Come on, you better praise him a little better than that. Come on, I want you to really give God a shout. A glare, there's a glare on that clock. I'm looking at it. What did it say? Nine o'clock? Yeah, there's a big glare on there. I have a watch, a beautiful watch, but the Holy Spirit told me to remove the battery. And I asked him why. He said, because I don't want you looking at your watch. I mean, I can look at it and see that I like it, if I like it, but that way I'm not controlled by time. But I am looking at that big clock right there. And I know many of you have to work in the morning, and I, I know all that. And I'm here all night, and you still not carry it. But how can you forget some of these stories? This will be on video. I mean, call and get the church. Get a copy. Watch it. Feed yourself. The anointing will be in the DVD or the MP4. It will be in that MP4. Get the audio, get the MP3, get it sent to you and play it. Get that savage music out of you. Get that Engelbert stuff out of you. I took my mother to see Engelbert. It was her dream to see Engelbert Humperdinck. That's who she grew up with. I said, Mom, and she said, if you could take me there before I go see Jesus. I said, okay, so we, my wife and I, we got tickets in Pittsburgh and we... We took her. She was so excited. Got all dressed up. And we got seats underneath the, the balcony. And here comes Engelbert, you know, out on the stage. Please release me. Let me go. My mother goes, oh, there he is. There he is. And she said, Billy, get me down close. I said, Mom, these are the seats we have. She said, do a miracle, Billy. Do a I said, Mom, it don't work like that. She said, you do miracles all the time. Do a miracle, get me down. I said, oh gosh. She said, I can't see him too well. I said, well, just a minute, I'll go see if I can. So I went down and talked to the guard, the security everywhere. I went down and I said, the security guard, I said, hey, I brought my mother here. She's almost 90 years old and, and she, she's just, you know, she's, I think she's at the end of, of life. And she, she said, sir, I can't make any exceptions. I said, you don't understand. He said, sir, please, please don't, don't do this. I said, well, I'll tell you what, I just, I just, I just thought that, you know, I thought there was more favor here than this. He said, you thought there was what? I thought there, there was more favor here than this. He said, go get your mother. <laughs> Come on, say, sometimes. sometimes. Favor's in the asking. Favor's in the asking. So I go back. I said, Mom, hurry up. We got, hurry up, hurry up. She said, oh, I knew you could do it. I knew you could do it. <laughs> so I get her down. We're right on the stage. She has her hands on, and Engel bursts down on this side of the, of the stage. He's singing all his, you know, all his songs. I said, Mom, just pay, keep calm. He's probably going to come our way. Are you, you ready? She said, oh, am I ready? She said, I am. She said I'm going home with him. I'm going to go home with him. I said, no. 
You're a Christian, Mom. You can't do that. You can't go home with them. So he comes walking over. I think he was singing, I'll save the last waltz for me, something. Here's a song he sings. And he comes walking over, and he's right there. His feet are right near my mother's hands. And I'm thinking, what a great son. And my mother looks, my mother looks up at him, and she says, oh, Billy, take me back to my seat now. I said, what's the matter? She said, take me back now. I said, what's the matter? She said, he don't look the same. I didn't know what, I mean, what do you do with that? I thought he looked pretty good for what he does and how I thought he looked great, but evidently she remembered him. I said, I hugged her, I took her back. I said, mom, but we all change. She said, we all change, but he shouldn't change. He's Engelbert. You know what I thought when I sat back down? We serve a God who never changes. He's the same. He is. Call on him. If you have to go to bed with a prayer cloth, then I do that. If you got to go to bed with Christian music, on do that. Do something to radically shift your thinking and keep it moving in the right direction. Prove that this, that this culture don't own you. Prove that you believe. Prove that you believe you have enough money to retire with. And that God will see that you have everything, that you'll never be begging for bread. And that you're never going to lose your mind. Stand on Deuteronomy 33, 25. So verse it says, As your days, so will your strength be. I hate people that get a healing touch and end up getting sicker than sick. Because they left thinking, I don't have to pray anymore or read anymore. Sorry, that's not the way this works. Say, everything living, everything living needs, nurturing. needs nurturing. Your plants your children, your animals, they all need nurturing. Even your goldfish, they know when you're mad. They don't see any flakes coming on the water. <laughs> nurture, nurture. Come on, say, nurture the anointing. This here doesn't have to end. It won't end for me. This is just another step, another bump in, in the glory. For the next place and the next place. You, gotta, you walk into places just carrying the aftermath of the last place. And in between the secret place. It gets very exciting. And you do run into real problems. You do run into pain in your body. You do run into stuff in your family. You run into it. You run into government and taxes. My accountant called me and said, we, uh, we don't show any records for all of your 941s off for a whole year. I said, well, that's crazy. I paid them. Can you prove it? Well, yeah, I can prove it. It was a nuisance. I had to go over the whole internet and search them out and photograph them and send them. And then she said to me, this is an accountant. She said, well, I'm so glad you kept these. Well, yeah, I did, but you're supposed to be keeping them too. We live in a broken system. And it's nothing personal. We're hated. When we get raptured, nobody's going to miss us. Come on. How many want to get raptured? How many want to go tonight? I was in one service. I said, how many want to go to heaven? Everybody clapped. I said, how many want to go right after the service? Nobody... Nobody said anything. <laughs> Let me think about that one. <laughs> it's a great privilege being here. You got a great church, a great pastor, his wife right here. Right here. Yeah. Caleb, where's Caleb at? Caleb's around here somewhere. Where'd Caleb go? Man, what a man. What a man. Yeah. He wants to talk to me. Billy, you just said favor was in the asking. Okay. Years ago, Catherine Coleman um, 
was connected to you by the Holy Ghost and put a, an anointing on your life. And I'd like you to lay your hands on me and the whole congregation agree yes. and, and I'll receive in Jesus' name. Yes. Wow. All my life. Come on. All my life. And all my life you have been so, so, so good. Every breath. With every breath that I am able. I will sing. Oh, I will sing. Of the goodness. Of the goodness of Of the goodness of the goodness of God. It's running after you. Come on. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Woo! Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness. It's running after me. All my life. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life. And all my life. Please move back, please. So, so good. Every breath. With every breath that I am able. I will sing. Oh, I of the goodness of the goodness of God right before I pray with the pastor I'm, I'm just getting this strong that there's one, two, there's three there's three people here that suicidal thoughts have been going through your head I, I need, there's three of you I need all three right here in front of me here's one I need all three I need you up here this is bigger than you this is bigger than you. Is this you, ma'am? Is that you? Get up here. It's bigger than you. There's one more. Come on, there's one more. Is it, who is it? Quickly. I want one more. There were three. Maybe there's four. This guy here looks like he's coming up too. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. This was so strong. It came so strong. Is this it, these three? Sometimes I'm not a good counter. Is it? I'm waiting. Is it? Th there's four. Here comes a fourth. Come on. Suicidal. Here comes five. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. What do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, five. We have six. We have a big guy here. Seven. This is you. This is catcher. I'll catch you, okay. I wouldn't be surprised what you have to deal with. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shock me. You can, you can, you can. I, but I'd rather people that are here. I'd rather the fight that's here in the room. Come on, before I pray this prayer, because they're going to be set free. Philippians 1.23 says these words. Uh, Paul said, I don't know whether to go home and die or to stay here with you in the flesh. And then the very next verse, here's what he says. It's more needful that I stay with you. Suicide is one of the most selfish things you can ever do. Because you're checking out, you're quitting. And especially if you're a Christian. You're quitting, you're saying, God can't do it. I've given up on faith. And that's a trophy for the devil. It's a castaway. And I'm so, um, give these people a hand clap for coming up here tonight. 
Come on. Come on, a big one. A big one. So your wife is going to be okay. You hear me? Your wife is going to be okay. No. This, this is a process. If you don't quit in the process, she's going to be okay. She's got to go through some difficult moments. God's with her. Remember what I'm saying to you. Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow, I will fear. You're going to walk through that valley with her. It's just a shadow. You just hang tight. Don't quit. She's coming out. Okay? Come on, put your hands up. I want you all to pray the same prayer with me. Come on, hands up, all of you. I believe there's somebody. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Okay. Every hand up. Let's put your hands up towards the people here tonight. It's the, it's the age we're living in. Love is growing cold. People are giving over to fear. There's no safe or safe that's left on the planet except where you are and the presence that you carry. When you walk in 7-Eleven, you make it holy. When you walk into the barbecue restaurant, you change the atmosphere. Let God arise in you. I pray for every one of these people, Master. I said, I, I, I thank you for their, their humble attitude to be here. And I break the spirit of death and, and suffering and torment. I loosen that power. I stop that harassing spirit. And I release the hope of God, the love of God in these people. Let God arise. There to be an awakening to righteousness and a discovery of a new purpose. Connect them to personal vision. Get them busy in the things of God. And make them pay back the devil for every threat. Come on, say, I renounce the devil. I renounce these thoughts. They're bigger than me. But from this night, I will have Bible thoughts. I will have Word of God thoughts. I will memorize verses to fight back with. I will never win. I will never surrender. I will never bow my knees to taking my own life. The Bible is in Revelation. I'm not going nowhere till my testimony is finished. Come on, somebody give God a shout. 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 Somebody give Him a mighty praise. Give Him a mighty praise. Come on, give Him a mighty mighty shout. Just stay there, sir. Just stay there. Just, I'm, I'm thankful, sir, you came up. Thankful. You can't just keep living and not answering the voices. You can't underestimate that. He's very good at what he does. He's a thief. And he kills and he steals. He don't like anything you're hearing or seeing tonight. There was a guy who waited for me after a meeting, one of these meetings. He waited for me in the parking lot. He said, you think you're holier than thou. I said, no, I think I'm holier than you. <laughs> Glory. Learn how to answer people. Don't hide behind anything. Be, become more real out in the open than, than what you are.
some guy's hitting on you, he don't care if you're married or not. He don't care if you wear a wedding ring. So when he keeps looking, you say, hey, you must see Jesus. I tell you the truth, babe, I was looking at your beautiful hair. Well, Jesus gave me this beautiful hair. Act like you're, act like you're sold out to him. Act like it. Act like it. Well, these people here got delivered. I'm telling you, they got delivered. They all got, Kimmer, right here. You were the singer, right? How long have you been singing here? You're his daughter. You're Dave's daughter. Put your hands up, Pastor Dave's daughter. You. Oh my! Look at this. You okay? Wow. You're gonna live, lady. You're gonna live and take over the land that God's giving you. You must be getting tired. I don't know who's getting tired here. Come on. You okay? It sounds like you're from New York. Shaw. Sure. Where are you from? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're okay. You're all right. He showed me last night. He showed you last night. The depth of the brokenness. Uh, the depth of your brokenness. Depth of her broke. Wow, that's a that's a title of a book right there. The depth of her brokenness. I'm a writer. You're a writer. Yeah. <laughs> I've helped people for 47 years to heal from trauma, but I haven't been able to heal from bullying. Do you know why you can help other people but not yourself? Because you have more grace for other people than you do yourself. You know yourself more. You don't know all the stuff they've done. So you tell everybody, oh, Jesus will forgive you. Come on, he can take you somewhere you've never been. He'll wash away those tears. It's easy for you to do that. Why can't you do it for you? Because you know. You know, you know what you've thought and said and what you did. You need the same grace for yourself. The Apostle Paul said, be partakers of my grace. He didn't say God's grace. He said, be partakers of my grace. Say that, be partakers, be partakers. of my grace. my grace. Experience what I've experienced. Get the freedom that I have. Get the same release that I got. I was a killer. I was a hatchet man, and he washed me. Mm. Mary said, she cast seven devils out of me. She didn't care who heard that at church, house of prayer church. She didn't care. She said, I had seven devils cast out last Sunday night. She didn't care. Be proud of what God has done in you and through you. It's very nice of you to share that. Because when you realize the depth of your brokenness, that the deeper your healing can be. Where do you where are you from, ma'am? Where do you live? Two places, Indiana and here. Okay. Last time you were here, um, you prayed for me for my marriage. And when I went back home, my husband got saved. And I baptized him. Wow. And it's been hell on me ever since. Oh. I've had seven surgeries on this arm for cancer in the last two months. And chemo and radiation. I just I can't do anymore. So you're surrendering tonight to no more. No more. And you're going to change addresses. Some of you need to change addresses tonight. And you need to get vaccinated with PS91.
Come on, Tay, open up your heart. Here comes PS91 coming your way. You're going to be good. I just love what I'm hearing and seeing and feeling. And you got a repercussion from the good that you did. My husband's saved. Yeah. He's a whole new person. The voice has left his head. He's not, he's not schizophrenic anymore. It's, it's amazing to see. I asked the Holy Spirit, I, Dave mentioned being raised in Catherine's meeting, and I was and seen so much, but I asked that I could have all of our meetings not just be healing meetings, but to teach in the meetings. But you would hear, hear stories from right from this lady. What she just said is a, is a whole seminar. It's a whole seminar. I love these kind of meetings when I go home and my eyes just stare at the ceiling all night. I love them. They hit you so hard. And then your mind just goes into replay. I'll say to my wife, which one stood out to you? And she'll say, well, that girl with the curly hair was amazing. <laughs> and I'll say to some of my staff, what stood out to you? And they'll call me the next day, Pastor, what stood out? Why am I training them what? to take note, to catalog God's faithfulness? Instead of just leaving saying, well, that was a great meeting. Oh, the anointing was thick. We got to get out of that. We got to get into something so specific that, that we catalog it. And it becomes part of our armor, part of our portfolio, part of our reference manual. It may not be you, but I was in a meeting. I was in a meeting at, at the house of prayer. I, I don't know who the lady was, but I watched it. And I heard her say the depth of her brokenness. And, and her husband got saved. Then she paid a, a horrific price. And she had to get free from helping him. Take notes. There's no easy path. There's favor that makes a hard path smoother. But this whole place out here is very, very dark. Getting darker by the day. That's why we got to get brighter by the day. Amen. Come on, say, arise and shine. Rise and shine. For, the on you. For the glory's on you. It's on me. It's on me. You're going to be good. You didn't go through all this for nothing. Can you hear me? Say, I hear you. Look at the power's coming on her. Just watch her. Here comes the power on her. Did you see that big guy? What did you think of that? Live right. Live tight. You, live right. Live tight. Okay? If you want to wear that jacket with a name tag here, live right. Live right. Live right! That's it. He loves you, man. He's with you. He loves you. He loves you. He's just doing a scrubbing on you tonight. Leave him do it. He loves you. You're back on track, man. You're back on track. Why do you get drunk? Just so you can tell people you're drunk in the spirit? No, you get drunk so you can say things you wouldn't normally say when you're sober. That's why some little guy gets drunk and says to a big guy, you're a punk. You're just nothing but a punk. I'll take you with my little thing. That's why people get drunk, inebriated. You get joy over nothing. You laugh at a light. You laugh at a clock. When you are taken over by the Holy Ghost, everything changes. Pretty soon you see the colors, you see the snow, you like 
You like the change of seasons. You like the desert. You love animals. You love the sunsets and the sunrises. You begin to see everything a little different when you're spirit-filled. This is amazing. This guy just got set free right here, this, this usher. He's a good man. He's a good man. I said he's a good man. But he's going to be a better man. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got to get better. Tell your neighbor. Wow. I'm going to pray for Pastor Dave. I guess we're coming to a close here. For it's been a privilege being with you guys here. I'm so grateful. So grateful. So grateful. This man here may be the most changed man in the church in the future. Right here. I pushed him. I did. I pushed him. I know I saw me pushing him. I just pushed him. The anointing in this room. The anointing in this room. If you can get here tonight, Sunday, tomorrow's Monday, I know. But if you can get here in the next couple of days, there'll be a lingering presence in this sanctuary. If, you can, if it's within driving distance, if it's not too inconvenient for you, what I would do if I was you in this meeting, you're witnessing this. Why? Because there's a presence here. Not me. There's a presence here. Come on, say it. There's a presence here. Something's changing. If you can get here, I'm sure they'll make a way. Where's uh? Can they get in? Don't whisper no. They don't tell me they can't get in. I just got out on the line for for this. With the school, for the for dad. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes, there's, there's a school in the basement during the day, so there's certain safety protocols, but the sanctuary we can open up for prayer. There's a revival coming to this church. Come on, revival. Come on. Come on. You better get excited about this church. Say, long as it's not me, I love it. Come on. <laughs> He's a, this guy here will never be the same. Wow. To think he got all dressed up, came here tonight, didn't even know this was going to happen. See, the best that God has for you, if he gives you an indication, you may not show up. Allow yourself to be invaded. Allow yourself to be interrupted. There would be a new resistance in him, a resistance he never thought he could have to evil. A resistance to wrong. That's what's in this whole house. Yeah. 
Is his wife here? Is she, is she by himself? Or? Come on up here. Sir. What do you think of this? Huh? Could you ever, did you ever hardly think you'd see this like this? No. Maybe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's t everything's changing. Good. There's a new man going home with you tonight. Awesome. <laughs> Come on, let's all stand to our feet. Let's pray for Pastor Dave. Where'd Pastor Dave go? Can we just, I'm going to come over here to you, okay? Come on, reach your hands over here to Pastor Dave. For those of you that want to stand around, be come and do that tonight. And Holy Spirit, we thank you tonight for this dear man. And I thank you for his legacy and his life, his shadow, and the labor of his hands and his heart. And you've never, never, and you'll never forsake the labor of love this man has devoted and given. We ask you yet for mercy and grace to pass over his house yet again. We ask for an invasion of healing and strength to pass over this house, the Kokonauer house. Oh God, and over this church. Mm. Come on, everybody, just pray in the spirit. Pray. Just come on, Dave. Come on, pray. Come on. Just pray. Just pray. Just pray. Touch him, Dave. Touch him. Just pray. Just pray. Come on, moving the tongues. Moving the tongues.
I believe I receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have you enjoyed tonight? Have you enjoyed Billy Burke? Powerful man of God. Amen. Real quick, make your way back to your seats real quick. I want to give you an opportunity to sow. He was talking tonight about sowing your seed into the people who minister to you. I want to give you that opportunity tonight. If you're making checks out, you can make a check out to House of Prayer and write Billy Burke in the little line there that asks you what to write for it. Write Billy Burke. One check, House of Prayer, and we'll write him one big check. We also have online giving. You can look right up at the screens. You can give to any of those online. And we'll make sure he gets everything. Glory to God. Aren't you excited for Pastor Dave's healing tonight? Praise the Lord. Strength in every step. Strength in every step. Come on up, ushers. Strength in every step. Go ahead. We do have, if you're new to this church and you like to join us, we have Wednesday night services at 7 o'clock and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We love to worship God, and this, is, this church preaches the word. Amen. So if you're looking for a home church, we invite you to come on out to the house of prayer. We'd love to have you. Praise the Lord. You know, I just got to say I'm a piano player. And this guy right here has played for about three hours, and he did awesome. I just want to give him a hand. Bruce, whoa. Hey, listen, this morning, I'll just tell you a quick story. This morning, Billy said, hey, Laura, let's do this song. And I thought, ooh, I wonder how that song goes. He's like, take it up another key. Ooh, I wonder what key I'm supposed to go to. Then he gave a new song. Hey, Laura, play this song. Ooh, that's an interesting song. I got a 50-50 shot, God. Where am I going? Take it up another key, and I thought, Holy Ghost, take over. Take my fingers, God. Listen, what a talent he is. I just so appreciate him and his lovely wife. They did amazing. Amazing. Stretch your hands towards this basket. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I thank you for the word that went forth tonight. God, I thank you for your healing that went forth tonight. Father, I thank you that we're going to hang on to our healing in the name of Jesus. We're, gonna, we're not going to let the devil steal our healing in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we sow this seed, I pray that you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on each and every giver, Father. In Jesus' name, open doors. This is the year of the open door. Open doors. For the givers, Father, hundredfold return in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. amen and amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>